This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Dampton Media, I think we're ready. <clears throat> Where's our finance people? <laughs> okay, we're on. No, I texted Donna, but I don't know. Okay, uh, we are going to call together the, uh, call to order rather, the meeting of the Southampton Select Board for February 29th, 2024, at a little after 6 o'clock. And if we could start by standing and saying the pledge of <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So we have our quorum tonight, and we have um, Joy remoting in. Welcome back, Joy. Even though a little bit long distance still, we'll see you soon, we hope, next time. Yeah. Next week. In person. <laughs> Very good. All right. And um, we will uh, have our members of finance coming in. Oh, perfect. Great. Hey. Come on in. Come on in. Very good. Yeah. good. <laughs> All right. So while they're sitting down for a minute, I just want to say that we had uh, a great luncheon for Ed uh, yesterday. And thanks to everybody who showed up. and. Uh, much appreciate everybody being there, and we had a presentation by um, Rep. Pease's staff and Senator Vilas's staff, a citation for Ed's service, not only Southampton, but generally municipal government for the many years between being West Springfield mayor, town administrator in Beckett, and town administrator here for six years. So this will be your, your last meeting, and uh, we much appreciate uh, all that you've done. So I'm, I'm amazed that you're actually with us tonight and, and willing to do this meeting tonight. But thank you for doing that. You caught up me at a weak moment, Chris. <laughs> I know I did. <laughs> yeah, I know I did. So with that, we have some members of our finance committee, too. So thank you. So you guys, uh, Becky and Doug, right? Um, I guess you have a quorum. <laughs> you no. have to call your meeting to order. No. They need three. They need three. We need three. Oh, Donna, if Donna comes. OK, perfect. OK. All right, almost a quorum, not quite. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so um, basically we're going to be um, um, working on two budget hearings tonight. Uh, the first up is going to be fire and um, then on highway. But before we do that, do we have any open time for the public? Yeah, Robert. Mm -hmm. Robert Floyd, College Highway. Speaking as town moderator, I didn't mention this the other evening, but the date for the presentation of materials for the annual town meeting uh, in the town clerk's office will be noon Tuesday, April 30th, which is a week before. So this gives us a chance to go back and forth if there's any need to. So that'll be if anybody has handouts that they want to yeah. include. And in any the town presentation meeting. materials. And I don't know if they changed the law, but apparently somebody can submit a handout that's anonymous, mm. that's protected, even though it's not subject to open meeting law. Uh. Uh, Boston protects that, so unless it's changed, I, I would, you know, okay. I would honor that. It just remind us that it's a copy into you and to the town clerk. Oh, just the town, just clerk. The town clerk. And then I go and I pick up, and it, it doesn't have to be all the copies, just except for the warrant. I don't want to give you <laughs> right. pressure there. We know it's coming. Right. We can't have the meeting without it. So the right. warrant and the motions and the explanations. Okay. Uh, doesn't have to be there that day, but everything else does. Sure. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Thank yep. you. We'll work on Thank you. keeping to our schedule. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Okay. All right, if not, I think we'll get started. So, Chief Fasoli. Uh, Richard Fasoli, Six Friar Road. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update on the fire department. Um, we had a uh, fire last night at, uh, on Russellville Road, a porch fire. Uh, the residents had some visitors, and I guess they were smoking out on the porch and caught the boards on fire. It was right at right about quarter past nine when that windstorm kicked up. 
So luckily the homeowner spotted it and was able to put it out and then we just uh, cut the boards away and put out the smoldering, smoldering wood. So uh, currently we are at run number 161. Uh, last year we were at 145 at this time and two years ago 2022 we were at 114. So just for everybody who's listening at home that may not know what a run is just tell us what a run right. is. Right so any uh, ambulance or fire call 911 call we are up to uh, 161. Okay. Uh, the administrative assistant uh, started a few couple months ago and it's working out good. Uh, she's doing payroll, the warrants, turnovers. Uh, the biggest issue we have is, uh, you know, I still have my day job. So, you know, she comes over during the day and does stuff. So we're, we're talking on the phone every day. And if I have a day off, then we, uh, you know, we, we get together and do some training and all that. So it's working out good. It's a big help. All right. Great. Uh, dispatch, uh, we moved to East Hampton. We're still having a little trouble with the radios cutting out, but they've been working on the solution for that. Uh, we are gonna start holding uh, monthly meetings uh, with East Hampton Police, Fire, uh, Southampton Police, so hopefully that will help. Uh, the shared fire prevention grant that Chief Norris of East Hampton's been working on, uh, he's got a verbo uh, approval, uh, nothing official yet, but he said it, it looked good. The only thing they're, they're not going to approve is the car that he was going for, but other than that, it, it should be okay. Um, while I was cleaning out the office when I became intern, I found a insurance check from 2018, $908, and uh, Finally went through find mass money and they approved that yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so we should be getting a check for that. Uh, the 1911 inspections are all done. As we already knew, uh, engine one failed. Uh, I have probably close to $17,000 right now in estimates to fix it. Um, so. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, update for the fire department. Good. Well, thanks. Okay. Um, so we have from you some budget budget sheets, and we've got them either print out or on our on our email. So, and finance has got them set too. So. So go I just uh, go line by line, or. Uh, however you'd like to do that. Yeah, I just talked about um, maybe some changes in terms of it may be easier. I don't know to take a look at. Um, especially focusing on the changes from current year to what you're proposing for next year. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, basically, our budget is pretty much going to stay the same. Um, we're, we're in pretty good shape this year. Um, so I'll start with uh, ambulance expense. Um, that's pretty much straightforward. The uh, medical supplies, uh, medical equipment are staying the same, we're in good shape there. Uh, our service agreements are all the same. You know, we have to have a service agreement for a lot of our equipment, our stretcher, our uh, Lucas CPR machines. Um, ambulance inspection, that was already done this year, so we passed that, that's $1,000 every year. Um, so can I ask, yeah. <clears throat> can I just ask a question? Um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding this. So starting with just um, under ambulance slash EMS expenses, 015236, right? That's where you are? Yeah. On right. your spreadsheet? Yeah. So right. the, ambulance he, expense. So the second item, McK McKinson? Right. Those are our medical. It's, it's, it's the rows that I don't, I don't get. So 5000 was budgeted. Was $2,720 actually spent year to date? Right, and for 2024 when I made this budget sheet out. And are you, it's, so it's that next column, the 1500 Well, that's what we've, uh, in 2023, that's what we spent uh, for the, when I made this budget out, I went back to 2023 and figured out how much we spent, you know, from January to June, and that was the uh, price I came up with, the projected. So, the so, so where it's, the title says fiscal year 24 projected right, that's, was 23 actual? 
Yes. Okay. So only 1,500 spent in 20? In, in 20, no. the months that are left. Uh -huh. Actual spending in 2024 was $2,700. Okay. 2023, from when I made this budget sheet to the end of the year, we spent an, uh, another 1500 on that account. So it's, it's, it's fiscal 24? Or calendar. The, the, t the header says fiscal year. Yeah, I'm 24 wondering if it's, it looks weird on our. So we see <coughs> right. the, the fiscal here. year 24. What, the total will be. What Chief Fizzoli is trying to do is yeah. he has the actuals to a certain yep. point in time in fiscal year 24. Right. He does not have the rest of the year. So what he has done is gone back to and looked at the historical expenses from that point in time yeah. to June 30th, 2023, and said, okay, we're gonna, ex we're gonna estimate, we're gonna spend the same amount in the months remaining in 24 as we did in 23. Gotcha. That's the projected amount. So then, am I right then to say 2720 plus 1500 is what you're anticipating Yep. <laughs> to spend out, which right. is a little bit less than the 5000 budgeted. Is that what I'm right, doing? Right. Okay, just wanted to be clear. Thank you. <laughs> right. So that's what that third column is, is projected for, oh, no, yeah. for this fiscal yeah. year. That's okay. I was just curious about adding those two columns. Right. Yeah, okay, very good. And, you know, those, they go up and down, those expenses, depending on how many ambulance calls we have, what we use during the call. Mm -hmm. um, but it should stay pretty close to what we spent in years past. Okay, and Boundtree is also just supplies or? Yes, they're a, a different uh, medical supply. We use, uh, those are the two big ones. And then the medical gear and medical equipment, um, those are just, uh, when we can't get our supplies from these two companies, then we'll go out and uh, find another company that would have the, the equipment or the supplies that we need. Okay. The uh, service agreement for the LP15, those are our heart monitors. Uh, each ambulance has one. It's a yearly contract. It's something the state requires uh, that we have serviced every year and, and certified, mm -hmm. along with the uh, Lucas CPR machines. Okay. Um, HCEMS is a Hampshire County EMS. Um, so that is a yearly uh, mem membership fee. Mm -hmm. Air gas is for the uh, O2 bottles. Yep. Um, okay. Ambulance inspection, I already said $1,000. We've already paid that. that. That should stay the same next year. CMED fees is a, uh, when we call the hospital, especially to uh, any hospital in Springfield. We don't call the hospital direct. It's like a uh, operator service is what the CMED is. Okay. Stretcher yearly inspection. Uh, we just had that done. Um, so again, it's a, it's a yearly inspection that the state requires. And uh, so those are done. Communication equipment, um, we're in the process of moving the repeater up to Mount Tom. So there's gonna be a fee for that from uh, Hoyle Gas and Electric. There'll be a monthly fee on that. And right now there's no monthly fee or? Right, because it's over at the highway. So uh, ambulance, I'm re requesting uh, a little bump in uh, the Verizon phone account because our phones currently are uh, iPhone 11s. Each ambulance has to have a phone mm -hmm. um, to be able to talk to the hospital directly. Plus there's, it has a uh, apps on there for, um, like one of them is the hand tebby down lower. It's for pediatric emergencies. So you can look up by the weight of the pediatric patient to know what kind of medications and how much medication to give each patient. Um, EMS training, we started this year having a monthly EMS training. Uh, so some of the money right there will be going for instructor fees. Mm -hmm. um, I am responding is an app we use for uh, responding to calls. They uh, 
everybody has it on their phone. They click on it that they're responding that way. East Hampton can see it on their screen in case they don't hear who's responding. Plus, when you show up at the station, we have a monitor right inside the door and it'll tell you uh, who's responding so you know whether to go on the call or wait for uh, who's showing up. Okay. Uh, target solutions training software for EMTs, vector solutions, um, the hand tevy I just spoke about. Those are all software. Uh, Target Solutions is a uh, software program we have on the phones for our, our daily checks on the ambulance. The ambulances have to be checked every day. Um, and then they also have a weekly check, a, a, a more thorough check. The, uh, the vector solutions also does the uh, fire truck inspections. So we have a check sheet for that we do once a week on each truck. Uh, fuel for the ambulance, that's through the highway department. Mm -hmm. um, so ambulance maintenance, um, that should be pretty good also. We had a, a, an, exp uh, that was, uh, you know, we had an un unexpected, uh, Suspension part go on A1, which cost uh, $4,300 last year. I don't expect it to go again this year. It was a computer for the suspension. Um, okay. So basic maintenance, uh, some stuff we do in-house. Yeah. Tell you what, uh, Chief, let's, let's just take these by mini groups here. So that's kind of the ambulance section. Yeah. Right, ambulance okay. maintenance. Okay. And then anybody, let's jump in. If anybody's got questions on the ambulance portion of what the chief has presented. Are we, we good? Anybody from, yeah, Scott, oh, sir. Um, the cost for the service agreements and software, that's not expected to go Sorry, up. Scott, poking oh, that mic. Yeah. <laughs> that. Uh, the cost for the service agreements and the software, that's not expected to go up too Say much. that again? The cost for the service agreements and the software, that's not expected to go up uh, next no. year? Okay. No, they're, they're, they should be pretty much the same. Um, we are switching over. The first line there was uh, on the ambulance expense was the AmbiPro software license and agreement. Um, we are switching to a, a different company, ESO, but we still have to keep one license for the AmbiPro uh, because all that information will not transfer over. So all the calls, you know, we have to keep our calls for like six, seven years in case a, a lawyer or anybody needs that information. We need to have that on file. So that's what that first line is. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, and Chief, on, on some of these contracts, do you get any kind of a discount if you pay up front early on in the year or anything like that? Are they? Uh, not that I'm aware of. The uh, ESO one, um, we are working on currently like the target solutions and the vector solutions. They also have uh, the same program. So we're trying to uh, bundle them all together and we should be able to save some money there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, so. All right. Chris, yes, please go ahead, Doug. Yep. This is in line with John's question. Yep, you might just need to move that mic around a little bit. Sorry, guys. It's going to have to get turned on. Oh, yep, it's got a weird button on it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, so the question just to get my bearings in this analysis for the ambulance for the fuel, the last line item, it shows that we have 6000 budgeted. Um, actual year to date for FY24 is 1450 and then we're expecting through the remainder of the year another 4000 right that was only for the 1400 was only for the first quarter mm -hmm. so Sweet. i should be getting three more mm -hmm. three more bills mm -hmm. okay thank you so. good okay so <laughs> would would down here do you all need to call your meeting to order as a uh, quorum Probably. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Chris, I, yes. we're just focused on ambulance expenses. Yeah, just We're going to yeah. come back to ambulance wages later, up on top. No, we, no, we I think I, we take ambulance as a group and then building expenses, and, you know, I'm just trying to go into. Right, but, but we skipped over the whole top section, Which lines one? 1 through 17. So where would we find We, those? we started on line 21. 
We started with we, the... We, we skipped the wages. Oh, okay. Which I'm fine if we're going to come back to. Yeah, we, well, they may be later down, and I don't know where, yeah, the, uh, they're, they're where the narrative down. part is. So let's, let's just follow the narrative part, and then we'll come back to the overall. I think that's probably easier. So we're doing 700 and 703, right? <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we've done, yeah, the two ambulances. Um, so the question I had was yeah. related to when we talked with Chief Billings, where, um, <laughs> Thank you. So when we talked to Chief Illingsworth, they also had cell phones um, that they were purchasing. So my, I guess my question is more in general for the town. Are we, are we collaborating on our cell phone plan purchases so that there may be some savings in getting them together? Um, um, that's try a good to question. Try to identify ways that we could, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to do anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I'll just t I'll take a note on it and uh, maybe assign it to like I don't know the technology committee or something mm -hmm. uh, to look in for next year. As maybe we can save a couple thousand dollars. And how, how many phones would there be though? Is for the ambulance drivers or? Uh, we have three phones. Three phones. Okay. Currently, yes. Thanks. Okay. So yeah, I'll just take that note and we'll leave the budget as is, but we'll try to investigate it mm -hmm. for maybe the next year's budget. Okay. So. All right. We'll keep on moving down, if anybody's okay. I'm moving down to building maintenance section. Uh, building maintenance, um, I mean, it's a, the building's from 1863, so. <laughs> uh, we just had the uh, air quality test results. Um, so there's some work that needs to be done there. They recommended replacing the doors into the office area to seal them up better from the uh, vehicle exhaust. Um, so that report came out after I made this budget sheet. Right. Um, building maintenance repair, that's basic, just basic repair. We've had to, uh, had some electrical wiring repaired inside the station, uh, some, move some outlets around to uh, make them more useful. Uh, heating equipment repair, uh, the uh, office uh, hot water baseboard heater has not worked in two years. Uh, we've been relying on uh, electric heaters in there. So there's no hot water in the station bathroom. There's hot water in the trailer, it's a separate system. So there hasn't been a, a priority. Uh, the association has agreed to uh, pay for a mini split AC heat system for the station offices because currently right now we use a window AC and a small portable one that goes in the casement window. Uh, they're not very efficient. Uh, they don't really cool that much. Um, the heat for the station, again, that's pretty set cost. Um, heat AC for the trailer, that's a uh, propane Okay, thanks. System, so that will be that's a separate cost there. Uh, the heat for Bleemer Road, we try to keep that down to uh, right around 50 degrees, just so the uh, water and the equipment doesn't freeze. Mm -hmm. um, and Chief, just again for people who may not know that we've got something on Bleemer Road, so just right, we have a, a small there. two bay station on Bleemer Road. Uh, engine one is there, and right now our UTV trailer is stored there for the winter. Uh, in the summer, we we keep it on the side of our trailer. Um, the electricity for 204 College High, we, we don't receive a bill. Um, that must be a, a town thing from Eversource. Could be, one of those famous credits. Yeah. I believe that is what the case is, that yeah. the uh, net metering credits predominantly offset um, the dollar value of the electricity bill at that location. So, again, the water bill. Um, you know, we don't we don't use a whole lot of water in the station. Uh, most of our water comes from the hydrant for the trucks. So, I mean, we're not billed for that. Charter internet. It's just the uh, internet charge, fire alarm. Uh, septic tank gets pumped out every three years. It was just done two years ago, so that will be done probably next year. Uh, trash expenses for the highway and for, uh, we have a shredding, valley shredding company that comes in every other month and empties our bin. 
Um, okay. So building maintenance is pretty pretty straightforward. Not a mm -hmm. not a lot of changes there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Questions uh, on questions on that subcategory? Anybody? No. So moving on to fire expense. Um, Full-time chief, I get, he has a uh, stipend, uh, $750 uniform cost. Um, I've only used $270 on that. I, I bought a couple shirts and some uh, replacement badges for the future permanent chief. Um, Part-time uniforms, that is mostly for new employees to have the proper uniform. Um, and also, if uh, they're on a call and their uniforms get damaged or soiled, where they can't be uh, can't be cleaned. Um, equipment maintenance. Uh, it's just all our equipment on the truck, all our portable equipment, our chainsaw, our jaws. Uh, we had to replace the uh, chainsaw blade chain on one of our chainsaws from last night. It hit a couple nails and. So that was replaced today. That Those kind of repairs are done in-house, uh, either by myself or a couple of the members are uh, mechanics also. Uh, fire extinguisher maintenance, that's a yearly cost. All our fire extinguishers on our equipment have to be inspected every year. Um, new firefighter physical, that is only used if we send somebody to the uh, full-time academy. And uh, we haven't had anybody go in a couple of years, so. Um, postage, that is just if we have to send something certified mail. Otherwise, I use the uh, postage machine here in the town hall. Office supplies are basically just uh, paper and printer ink and, ink and stuff like that. Uh, the dues are for the three associations that the fire chief uh, belongs to. That would be Hampshire County Chief Association, the Western Mass Chief Association, and the Mass State Fire Chief Association. Uh, computer and hardware tech support. Uh, in the past, Chief Workman had had a uh, contract with the IT tech from Belchertown. Uh, right now, I currently have somebody on a department that works for an IT department full-time. This is regular job, so I have no, uh, if anything, I just pay an hourly wage for him. So I don't, I don't need a contract for that. Um, again, firefighter equipment, flashlights, axes, shovels, uh, that stuff, you know, if we have a fire and it gets damaged, you know, we need to replace it. SCBA bottle replacement. Um, I just received a grant for nine replacement bottles. Uh, I know Chief Anderson has gone for a, uh, the FEMA grant to replace all the Scott packs and with that would become new bottles. But if he doesn't get it, I still need to replace them bottles. Um, it's an NFPA regulation. Uh, every 15 years you have to replace them. So we have actually 20 bottles that are going to be expired in 2025. So this grant, I was able to purchase nine of them. If Chief Anderson's grant doesn't come through, then I would probably uh, apply again next year for more bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, hose purchase, uh, for the first time in in the department, we had a, uh, I had the uh, hose tested by an outside company. They come in, they unload the trucks, um, test the hose, re-rack the trucks, they mark every hose, so now we know every piece of hose that we have at the station on the trucks. Uh, they, they give a printout of the year, uh, the make, model, the size, so we're pretty good on hose. We'll have to replace a few lengths that are, I mean, we have hose from 1984 that were still in service, so. Um, SCBA maintenance, we just had that done. That's, again, that's a yearly cost where NFPA requires us to have all of them tested. 
uh, air compressor, yearly maintenance, that is for filling the SCBA bottles. Currently, we, our compressor was a, a donation from Barnes Fire. Um, it's, it's fairly old, but you can still uh, get parts for it. And it, so they come in every quarter and do an air quality test, and then once a year they do a, a full service. Um, emergency reporting is all our uh, electronic permits and inspections. Uh, in the past, Chief Workman was using uh, paper permits. And this way here, it's all electronic uh, on the computer. So we now we have a database on all our inspections. Uh, City of Northampton hearing officer. Um, I haven't uh, received a new bill for that. I'm not quite sure um, what that entails. I know uh, that is basically for if we have to take somebody to uh, court for a violation of, of a fire or burning or something like that, that's what that's for. Truck pump testing, again, it's an NFPA requirement. We have to have that every year. Um, that's coming up in May. Uh, so all three trucks will be done. Or, well, this year we're only gonna do the two because engine one failed last year. There's no sense to have it fail again this year. Hose testing I just spoke about. Um, ladder testing, again, um, it's a yearly expense. So that pretty much stays the same. I, we don't, all the ladders we have, we don't, we don't need any more, so it shouldn't change much. Uh, fuel for vehicles, highway department account. Um, again, that was only for the first quarter. Fire vehicles, uh, Wex Bank is our, every vehicle has a credit card. Uh, that is basically for the chief vehicle. Um, and the UTV and the pickup, which are all gas, and the highway department doesn't have a gas pump anymore. Okay. So, any questions on fire expense? Okay. Anybody? Anything? Okay. Mm. Nope. No. Okay, we may come back around, but yep. go ahead. Yep. Uh, fire truck maintenance. Uh, again, we should be pretty good with that. Um, <coughs> Our biggest expense last year was our tires. We replaced them on engine three and engine four because they were original from 2005 for engine three and 2010 for engine four. So that outside repair should more line up to the 8,000 than the 11,000 we spent this previous year. Uh, PMs, they get serviced once a year. Uh, this is for all the vehicles that would encounter engine three, engine four, the brush truck, the chief vehicle, the uh, utility pickup. Um, a lot of the vehicle maintenance we can do in-house as much as possible. State, federal, and NFP A1911 inspections, uh, those are a yearly expense that we have to uh, we have to do, um, like I said, I had the, the last two done. It was uh, $1,400 for two trucks. Where engine three, I had that, uh, Chief Workman had that company out of Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and it was $1,600 just for the one because there was a, almost a $700 fee just for travel costs. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's basically the fire truck maintenance. And the 1911 inspections are done every year or how often? Uh, they recommend them every year, yes. Excellent. So. Should there be yeah, an actual on the, you said there was $1,400. Should there be an actual on the 1911 inspections? I see the. They have is there an, should there be an actual in the actual school for the 1911? Right, well, I, I just submitted that oh, warrant okay, um, I get it. So it's last night, so. Thank you. Just cross paths with when he developed the right. budget. Yeah. yeah, okay. Anything, anybody? Um, moving on to uh, turnout gear. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, I mean, we've, we've gotten $15,000 uh, line item for turnout gear. Again, that's an NFPA requirement that after 10 years, you have to replace the gear, even though 
technically there's nothing wrong with them, but if something was to happen and the gear is out of uh, date, then there would be a liability, liability issue. So I have three sets of gear currently ordered. Um, we did a uh, complete inspection on all our gear. So I have a, a database now. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Database now on all our gear. Everything's dated. Uh, entered on the computer. What what is the cost for one set of gear per person? Uh, well, ten thousand two hundred is divided by three, so that's what a little over three thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, about what thirty three hundred, thirty four hundred. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, do you get a, Don't you get a grant? Didn't, weren't there grants that were being received for turnout gear? No? Uh, to replace turnout gear? From there is grants available. That's the uh, firefighter safety equipment grant. Yeah, I was thinking maybe Chief Workman had, had applied for those in the past, perhaps. And right, well, that, he was that, on schedule. that yeah. firefighter equipment grant where I bought the bottles, um, you could purchase turnout gear I see okay. but we already have it on a, on a line item okay. so that's why I use the grant for the bottles okay um, so this is getting out three and then so you're saying that every year you would want to replace three is right we're idea? on a we're back on schedule now where um, again last year uh, chief workman used the money on other expenses so we didn't buy any gear last year but we are, uh, like I said, I did a complete inventory, so now we know um, next year, you know, we'll have three more sets of gear that are going out of spec that we'll have to replace. Okay. And just for information, how many total sets of gear do you have? Uh, that is a good question. We have offhand, I think we have like 32 sets of gear. Or what? So. Oh, three a year, 10 years, 30. <laughs> Guess so. Uh, <laughs> okay. So. Uh, again, helmets, boots, gloves, they're all on that 10-year NFPA regulation. So this year we plan on uh, replacing five helmets. Uh, my helmet uh, is currently expired. Uh, it expired uh, last year, 2023. Um, it's not a huge issue because more than likely I won't be going into the fire and having something fall on my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so turnout gear, like I said, it's a line item. We'll we'll spend all that, no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that that's not going to change. I mean, it used to be twelve thousand dollars a year a few years back, but with the cost of everything else, the uh, the account went up to fifteen. Uh, ambulance billing, uh, that is our medical billing company. For all ambulance calls, they get uh, four cents for every dollar that they uh, they recoup on our our ambulance expense, our ambulance billing. Um, so that is, you know, we're we're busy now. I mean, we've done we're up 50 calls from two years ago. So that expense uh, it got added to at the special town meeting. It was originally 9,000, um, now it's up to 18. Oh. EMT license and certification. Uh, every two years you have to have uh, your license renewed. So that is uh, something that we pay the department uh, and personnel. Um, if they don't get reimbursed from their full-time job, it's just one small benefit that we can give them. Uh, we don't pay vacation time, sick time, uh, personal time. So that's about the only benefit they get besides, you know, their regular pay. Mm -hmm. Fire chief salary. Um, obviously, I'm not getting the uh, full chief salary. I only work 30 hours a week right now. Uh, so... <coughs> That shouldn't uh, be an issue for next year. Uh, you know, that's a contract negotiation. So th currently it's 105. We've only haven't even uh, used half of it. So mm -hmm. fire wages, fire and EMS wages. Um, the town approved two full time 
paramedics back in May, but with uh, no permanent chief, we haven't hired the uh, personnel. It shouldn't change a whole lot pay-wise for the two full-time because, I mean, we have people working now. The only thing that would change is, uh, you know, the, the benefits. You know, the full-time people would have sick time, vacation time, overtime. Um, currently now, we have overtime uh, very rarely. They have to work uh, 106 hours within a two-week span, and that's few and far between. Um, the final thing is EMT standby wage. Uh, I wrote down to uh, eliminate it for the 2025 budget. We haven't used that account in a, a few years. Um, now that we have people on duty all the time, uh, we don't have a standby mm -hmm. need anymore. Okay. So. All right. Good. Um, basically, our our expense change from 24 to 25 would be the uh, administrative assistant. Uh, you know, I have to pay half of her right. her salary. Um, we don't have the medical IV pumps. If you're going to the uh, regular budget sheet, that was a one-time expense. That was six thousand dollars. Again, EMT standby. We're not going to be doing that anymore. So that's a two thousand dollars saving. And then also last year we had to pay for the uh, fire EMS department study mm -hmm. uh, that was 15,000 so we don't have to uh, that's not an expense I will need for 2025 mm -hmm. okay. so our, our budget should go down uh, about a little over eleven thousand dollars if, if it, everything stays the same okay good well I'm assuming that we we'll probably have some questions around wages so let me kind of focus people in that that neighborhood since we haven't hired the two paramedics yet right are they budgeted in this though or they were not? budgeted last year in 2024 so that's why i kept that the same all right and they're, uh, they're it's hard the, to they're under the ems wage line right okay. ems and fire wages um because in 2023 before we agreed for those positions um it was four hundred and twenty-four thousand uh, dollars last this year and next year. It's uh, twenty twenty-four was five hundred thousand for the cost of the two full-time people. Um, same with fire wages. Uh, fire wages were one hundred and sixty-eight thousand in twenty twenty-three. This year it was one hundred and seventy-one. So that went up a little bit. Again, I, it was hard to figure out the budget for that because you know we don't have them people we don't I don't know what their pay rates gonna be how many hours they're gonna work how many hours of overtime they're gonna work mm -hmm. so but the intent will be that those will be full-time so right now just for again people that may not be aware we've got when we have the full-time chief hired on right. that will be the one full-time position plus two paramedics are intended to be full-time so we'll end up with three full-time right positions okay. three full-time and then the uh administrative assistant mm -hmm. is a full-time position but it's shared. it's basically part-time for us right shared with the police department right, right. and then uh, if we go forward with the fire prevention uh, with east hampton uh, there's going to be a, a set cost on that the first year's you know the grant takes care of it but then after that there'll be a cost involved on that uh, but that's still up in the air because obviously we don't have the grant yet and we're not, you know, how many inspections they do for, he does for Southampton or she does for Southampton. Mm -hmm. So that would be, you know, a 2026 budget item. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So. Questions, anybody? Yeah, Scott, please. Uh, with the air quality test just coming in, should some of the money that you realize the savings on be transferred into building maintenance just to address those issues that might come up? Say that again, what? So with the air quality test just coming in a couple days a ago. Oh, the sorry. air quality <laughs> test was uh, no charge from the state. Right, but to address some of the issues that might come up. Right, the recommendations, there's really a, 
you know, I, I had set up this budget request before we got the air quality test back. So, um, you know, hopefully the uh, expenses won't, you know, kill my building expense budget, but I might, you know, in the future, you might have to move money around. So, yeah, the biggest thing were the doors. Um, another thing that we already budgeted for was a uh, uh, air quality machines or uh, air filter machines, air exchangers. Um, so we were waiting for the air quality test to come back to decide which way we wanted to go, whether we wanted to put something on the trucks or just have a air exchanger up on the ceilings. So that's something I'll, uh, I guess I'll be working with you now that Ed's leaving today, so. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> okay, but. good, all right. Yeah. Other questions, what, guys? Yeah? So John? how are we doing on covering shifts? Covering shifts is always a challenge. Um, it, it, lately, it's been pretty good. Um, we're not, we need to be 24 seven, two people on each shift. Um, we're not that. Um, the uh, biggest problem is, you know, somebody will be scheduled for a shift and then they'll, they'll get held over at their full-time fire position. So that leaves that shift open. Um, you, the biggest problem with that is they don't know usually till that day or that morning that they have to stay. A lot of, a lot of the members, they'll either work for us and then go right to their other permanent fire job, like East Hampton, Westfield, mm -hmm. or they'll work Westfield today and work for us tomorrow. And just like everybody else, you know, if the guys call out sick in Westfield, they have to stay. You know, it's a mandatory stay where for us, all these guys are per diem, they're here because they wanna be, you know, I mean, we can't hold them. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their union contracts, you know, they have to stay. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, we're not unions, so they're here. I mean, they're not volunteer to be here, they're getting paid, but they're here because they want to be. It's, yeah. not their, it's not their priority. Yeah. What's that? It's not their priority. They can't right. say no to the full time right. job. Right. I mean, the only priority right now is, is the fire chief would be the full time position. Mm -hmm. Once we get the two people, and then that, that hopefully that'll help a lot, you know, whether they're, you know, they're on their regular shift or, you know, they want to pick up an overtime shift, something like that. Right. Um, I mean, ideally, you would want to see four full-time people. Um, that way, you know, you'd be able to cover more shifts. Um, but, you know, we, we haven't had filled the positions yet, so we don't know how much it's going to cost, whether, you know, to go for two more people would be the ideal situation to have four. That way you could have two on pretty much all the time, you know, full time. Right. Well, right, because they, they wouldn't work the same shift, though. Um, no, they would probably work, you know, four on, four off. Well, meaning both Day paramedics shifts. aren't going to work together. What's that? Both paramedics won't work together. Right. The two full timers probably would not work together. Right, no. Because yeah. we, you could have a paramedic with an EMT. Right. And still respond. Right. So therefore, yeah. Okay. And then the chief. Um, now, Chief Workman never wanted to, but I mean, I, if I become the chief, I, you know, I don't have an issue going on an ambulance call. I, I have medical equipment in the chief vehicle now, which there was never in the past. Yeah. And um, I know, um, I also, uh, you know, if there's an open shift and I'm available, you know, I respond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know the original game plan when, when we appointed you interim, we're the ones who told you not to hire anybody, mm. but I don't think we envisioned it going this far. Yeah. Right. So I would probably support if you came forward with a plan of, I think I want to hire and here's how I want to staff it. Okay. For us to consider. Yeah. I think, I think we would. Yeah. I mean, I think as, as we're getting a little bit closer to however we're going to end up with a, a, with a permanent chief, I think we may as well start. Right. I think it would be a good idea to yep. get the ball rolling yep. now. I agree. I Sketch totally it agree. out. And, right. and then, you know, if everybody right. buys into it, then we can probably move yeah, forward. What I, what I plan on doing, you know, with that was I was going to reach out to, you know, Westfield, East Hampton, see what they require for, you know, I mean, obviously they're union, so it's, there's some difference, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm not gonna, 
make it my own. I mean, uh, you know, the system is out there. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So. So. So again, the goal is to have at least a paramedic and an EMT on 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 every shift. On every shift. Right. Currently, right now, we work a uh, ten-hour day shift, eight to six p.m. And then the overnight is 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. So it's 10 hour days, 14 hour nights. So. Okay. Okay, any comments, questions? Feel free. <laughs> and this is you know, for anybody who's here um, and listening in. We, we don't have, you know, we're, we're right now just hearing the presentations from the various departments. At some point, we'll end up putting all this, <laughs> all this together and trying to match it against revenues or projected revenues and trying to see what this, you know, animal is really going to look like. So we're just trying to hear from them at this point in time what the, what the rationale is for the, for the budget request that they're putting for us. So... Um, if we don't have lots of questions right now, we may come back to you. So don't yep. don't assume that uh, just because we're not asking a lot tonight that there may not be some in the future. But um, if it, I, yeah, John. Well, I don't have a question for the chief yeah. unless he knows it. But do we have um, do we know where we are on uh, ambulance receipts? Hmm. In, in like where we are today, what, however far along we are, whether it's January or whatever, and to that same period last year, are we, are we comparable? Or no? Yeah, we're, we're looking at and now and whether it's a calendar year or a fiscal year, bringing in about three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> about three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and, and 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 this is just crude, but when Bradley and I were uh, working on the revenue side of the budget this year, we had. <laughs> gone up and utilized 125,000 from 100,000 in the past for ambulance receipts towards EMS expenses. Uh, my quick back of the hand calculation, and then you've got to play with, do you want to leave some in the ambulance receipts too, was to actually go to 175,000 uh, to be used towards EMS expenses and uh, in, in addition to that, uh, take a look at putting 100 to uh, 125,000 into the stabilization account to purchase the next ambulance. Yeah. Which then that leads me to my, ne my next set of questions. So let's, let's assume that we get the grant for the um, tanker. Right. Okay, so now that comes on board. Even if all moves forward and we build this public safety complex building as fast as we can, we're going to be here for another year or so. Oh, right? at least, yeah. So how, how, would you, how, would you st how would you station the vehicles? Well, the, obviously the new tanker would stay up here, and I'd have to move one of the engines down to the other station. Um, and then the problem would be, I mean, there's space down there for two fire trucks. Yeah. Um, the problem would be... Like this winter, you know, I had the open bay, so that's why I put that trailer down there for the winter, just to keep it out of the weather. Um, so that would either, you know, we would either have to leave it outside or find another home for it for the winter. The trailer? Mm -hmm. The trailer with the yep. UTV in it, yes. Mm -hmm. And then Ed just mentioned, touched on the ambulances. Wait, wait, how many years out before we have to think about replacing one of them? Uh, well, the A1, our primary ambulance, is a 2018. A2 is a 2008. I was going to uh, put it in uh, for capital expense this year, but I held off uh, till probably next year just because of the public safety complex. I didn't want to uh, be asking for too much. <laughs> um, okay. Again, if we eventually down the road if we do get four people on um it would be even better to have them you know if they work together because a lot of our calls lately are where it's more and more where our first ambulance is out and then there's another ambulance call so that revenue for that ambulance call is going to westfield east hampton um so eventually the goal is i mean it's future goal would be to have four people on, you know, 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we put in for, for the public safety complex, I requested uh, five bunk rooms. Um, so that's what the five would be, it would be four and, a, and an officer on duty. 
Mhm. So. Mhm. Okay. Anything else? Um, Danke. And then just sorry on the on the wages here, and, and I understand what you're doing with holding them where they are. In the past, we've often been blamed for not adding two and a half percent increases. Do you right. think well, you'll, be, you'll still be able to, to manage? If I if I do become the permanent chief, the payroll currently is it's even mind boggling for me the the wages on how Chief Workman did it because in the past we'd always get the raise with the rest of the town, but then he changed it and. He'll, he would hire somebody and their wage would be up here and somebody that's already working would be down here. So I would like, eventually I would like to at least get everybody, you know, at the same rate, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a future thing, you know. Okay. Yeah. And just following on that, it, is it fair to say that you've got a, a basic wage for a paramedic because of those qualifications and a basic wage right. for an EMT, and, but depending on their years of experience, they would get, there would, there would be variation that, that's how, amongst the EMTs. That's or, how Chief Workman set up his pay scale, which was approved 2022 by the select board, I guess, is what the paper says. Yeah. Um, and it all depends if you're strictly just an EMT, if you're an EMT with uh, the state qualifications, firefighter one and two, you would get a bump in pay. Uh, officers get a bump in pay. Um, so if you're just a strictly a firefighter, a call firefighter, there's one rate. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, Hampshire County, has it's called the Hampshire Six. It's a basic firefighter uh, course. Uh, we send everybody, everybody, is certified uh, Hampshire County. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of our qualifications for being on the fire department. Mm -hmm. uh, they usually have them classes twice a year. There are six classes on a Sunday. Uh, so as soon as we hire, you know, a new new person and they haven't had it, then we send them to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just. I'm kind of just working over. The, mm -hmm. Oh yes. Oh, Sorry, a lot of the, the the echo in this room is not very good. The, the acoustics in the room in general. So just so that thank you, everybody's here. Yeah, I'm just working through the, the the fundamentals or the high level picture of all the all the data we have in front of us. And uh, one part that's confusing me. So hopefully you can just point it out quickly to me. Is uh, you know all, all the columns and all the data we walk through, they all have a, a negative amount at least projected for uh, 2024. Right. So if they're all under what we estimated for 2024, then the thing that I'm not catching here is how come the money we're asking for 2025 isn't less? Well, I just basically I just kept it the same as what 2024 was. I wasn't asking for anything more. Um, so the, uh, Dan, are you interpreting that to be a shortfall? No, 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 I'm interpreting that we, we were, we're it's actually a for more money. It's we should a, have a surplus. There should be a, a surplus. It's a surplus that's in there. Right. Right. He's not going to spend $50,000 so far. Right. So shouldn't that mean next year we shouldn't ask for, we should ask for $50,000 less if our money that we're spending this year worked out to be not so much forecasting for the future? I mean, that's, what I, that's kind of what I was trying to get to. Right. All this paperwork. So in, in here where you're saying like under fire expenses, you're not going to spend $14,940 as right. an example. Right. So Dan's question is why should we give that to you again next year if you're not going to spend it, if we could reallocate that to another department that needs it? Um, that's well, that's up to you guys, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess your answer would be you're interim and you haven't implemented all the full changes that you right. want to. Right. So yeah. you'd like a little buffer. Right. Yeah. Going into next year. I mean, this is my first budget, so my first budget meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, basically, that's why I kept pretty much everything the same. Um, as best of my knowledge, you know, we hit, most of our accounts, we haven't hit 50%. Even, uh, you know, going by Bradley's sheet that he sends out every couple of weeks, we're just a few at 50%, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, the years 
more than half over. Right. Yep. So, I mean, whatever we don't use, it would just go back into the into the general fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ed, so. please. Yeah. And uh, I'd just like to f follow up on the question or comment that Scott had made is now that we do have possession of that air qual quality test, there are some things in there that should be addressed fa fairly so soonly. So, uh, and yes, the chief did not have that. Uh, when he actually submitted this budget, but I, I would think that uh, you know the select board and the finance committee would probably uh, think about asking him to take a look at what some of those costs are and you know whether they should uh, be adjusted within this submittal. Right. right. And at a at a quick read through on the fire on the quality air quality testing, if I'm recalling the the air quality testing in the trailer came out pretty good right and it's really just in the station itself right which, right so there's at least a little bit of a silver lining right there are, uh, so that like i said the biggest things were the uh the doors going into the office in the uh day room uh they're not sealed tight mm -hmm. um and then the uh in the past, we've had some roof leaks in that back office section. Uh, I got up there and sealed them. We haven't had any leaks lately. Mm -hmm. But in the chief's office, the panels had started falling down. And when they fell down, you know, there's mold up there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that would have to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things they said was to either get a company in to clean the carpets or just remove them. Um, mm -hmm. So, they've been there for quite a while. <laughs> they've been in there uh, a long time, yes. Yeah, actually, one of the things in that report is that they do not recommend carpeting in public safety facilities, whether it be fire, EMS, or police, just because of the carcinogens that come sure. may come back in from right. fire, EMS, and, yeah. and contaminants that may come back from police investigations. Right. Right. Our, our, our department policy is no turnout gear and then back rooms, mm -hmm. but I mean, you're still got to walk through the bay and, you know, you're taking the gear off and you're not, we don't have, we have a shower in the trailer, but I mean, you know, you, you can't so really... Yep. decon after every fire call right where the new public safety complex would have all of that if needed mm -hmm. yep. so uh, a yeah. follow-up uh, question i'm sorry just speak louder that's all a follow-up question to my question previously is we have the columns for the uh fiscal year 2020 uh 24 uh that would be the the budgeted and the 2025 fiscal year proposed. Um, we have that third column, the 2024 projected. The which one? Yeah. Uh, the 24 projected. Yeah. Do we That's, have do we have that total? Like um, I don't see the total anywhere. That's the part of what what does that come out to? Of the third column. Yeah. The the 2024 projected. So we can see where we think we're going to end up in 2024. Well, isn't that the part in, in orange there? But it's not totaled. I don't see it, at least on the papers I have. Well, on the, on the top part, though, if I'm not mistaken. OK. Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. If the FY24, in, in what John was referring to earlier on, is lines, whatever, three through yeah. 16 or something on our spreadsheet here, uh, the very top part. So all of that FY24, the total budget is 974500 and then the FY25 request if you will is 989342 yep. and the main the main difference there is that shared admin person right so part right. of the data the piece of data i'm looking for is in this analysis there's all the, there's all this um what we spent so far mm -hmm. and an estimate based on 2023 of what was spent for the rest of the year? Right. Right. Where's where's that totaled up? What's that? Right, I didn't. Uh, I don't have that projected. Yeah, that total. Is I didn't. I didn't that, even think of that. That would be good because that can t kind of tell us at least what we estimate for this year. The right. Cost and I mean, I have it broken down to each yep. separate account, but I didn't. I didn't total it. No. Yeah, yeah. That would be good to add together. Okay. I ran that quickly. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Doug. And if you look at that one column being the three months actual and the remainder expected, it looks to be 690000 
Yeah. Most of the difference being the wage shortfalls from not having those full-time positions. Yeah. Thank you. So we'll assume that if we assume those roles were filled, like the fire chief, obviously we know we're going to fill that, and we have that have um, the other roles. Real, sorry, the other roles filled in. Can you can you run that hypothetical for me? Well, if the paramedic, if the paramedic, if the paramedics are going to be about maybe sixty seven, sixty nine thousand a pop for oh. simple math, let's say it's seventy. There's one forty there. Yeah. Okay. The difference in the chief's yeah. pay is probably. Two thirds? Are you getting roughly a, th a th well? No, because you're only getting thirty hours. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm at I'm at thirty hours, and I'm not at the full, um, rate, at the rate. full chief pay yeah. rate. Right. Okay. right. Yeah. So call that another forty. There's two hundred thousand. There's a couple hundred thousand. At, at, uh, yeah. hundred and hundred and five thousand. If you broke that down to you know forty hours a week, two thousand eighty hours, it's it's like fifty dollars an hour. And currently, I, I get thirty seven fifty as chief. So, yeah. So there's a cost, a big cost savings right there. So if we if we go with the top section, line seventeen, mm -hmm. where he's asking for nine eighty nine, yep. to an expiring nine seventy four, it's only a, a one point five two percent increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that does not build in any costs in terms of the the air quality test report. That's not factored in here right now. Correct. Well, so my interpretation of that is I look down the bottom and, and the areas that are underspent. I mean, I can't I don't know how many doors there are, but the, right now, in building maintenance, you're, you're not planning on spending thirty nine hundred dollars. Right. Will thirty nine hundred dollars take care of those doors one time thing mm -hmm. and get them done. Well, again, without the data points, I don't know. Yeah, there are maybe. Right. Yeah. But I'm, and I'm just basing that on the replacement of uh, the door and the police station with this dispatch change. That one door was close to almost five thousand dollars installed. Yeah, but what, right. But that was a different type of door, though, right? That right. Was a door that you couldn't break through. Right. I mean, we don't need that kind of door. We just need a door that seals tight. That's seals all. Home. But even if it's half of that, that's twenty five hundred. Yeah. Right. And there's thirty nine there. You know. Yeah. Right. yeah. So. So anyway, yeah. Okay. And and the uh, the town already budgeted for the air exchangers for the station. So that was that, part of the capital yeah, expense, right? From correct, last right, from last year. For the annual town meeting. Right. And we're just waiting to see what what makes the most sense. Like you said originally. Right. We I were think, waiting for the air quality report. Right. So because I think originally the idea had been to have some sort of an air exchanger type thing on the fire trucks themselves. Right. Versus perhaps something like you mentioned right. in the ceiling or somewhere. Yeah. So that we may or may not be able to take with us. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Supposedly yeah. it was planned to be able to be moved, but yeah, yeah. which we don't. Know. <clears throat> so all that really needs an investigation going forward. But um, <laughs> you know, we definitely knew at the time back in in the May town meeting that you know the the working conditions and and all of that within the fire station are horrendous in terms of you know the air quality there. So we wanted to do right. whatever we could to put money aside to. Uh, have some improvements for fire safety for the firefighters. Right. So at least my ana my analysis shows that if we were to keep the salaries for 2025 and assume the other items were to come in as our estimated budget based on the 2024 numbers to match that, I see somewhere around a 50k um, reduction we could apply here. So something to keep in mind as we move forward mm -hmm. with things, yeah. keeping the staff, but looking to try to match the actuals for 2024 and the actuals in the estimate mm -hmm. of 2024 and 2025 for everything else. Yeah. And I, yeah, and it may show up more in, in Bradley's overall spreadsheet, you know, yep. every department spreadsheet where the, yeah, I just, that shows the year to year change better, perhaps. I, I don't dis I don't disagree with your numbers, Dan. I just yeah. I knowing that last year we did an override of X amount to put into here. Yeah. That until we can confirm that every shift is covered around the clock in accordance with that override, I wouldn't want to pull money out. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm making the assumption that on fiscal year 2025, 2025 day one, we've hired, yeah. filled all those positions. Mm -hmm. If we're going to, so I, I still think I'm being cautious in this. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Yeah. Donna. Yeah. The other thing to note is that if you, you know, if you try to build a budget that's too close to what it actually is, then yep. you will have no free cash. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've, you've got to, I mean, you want to be obviously responsible with, mm -hmm. with how you build your budget and, and what the money gets spent on, but you don't want to be cutting every line too close and not have any room either. Mm -hmm. Right. What, what is this free cash you speak of? <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> what's the last time we had? <laughs> yep. It's, it's, it's a yeah. careful surgery we need to have to do. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think the other comment that I would make is even with leaving the salary lines as they were originally budgeted for, with the full-time positions that were approved, that assumes no cost of labor increase. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's the other thing. Is it, you know, if you fill those day one, they may not be priced for the order. Either. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's quite a good true. point. Yeah, quite true. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on this? If not, I think... No, the only thing that I don't have a... Com uh, well, I do have a yep. comment, I guess. I, yep. I will say to, to Chief Fasoli that uh, this is my third time seeing the fire department budget. I can understand this one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, thank you for, thank you. for walking All right, us through thank it. Thank you. I, I know, and, and thank you, too, for your first time putting it together. I think you did a good job putting it together and understanding all the, all the different costs and line items. So thank you for doing I, that. Here's what I would ask for the budget for 2025. And it's a little harder to, of the, this ask is a little harder than what we've done of kind of taking the, taking the previous year and, and using that as the baseline. G going back and thinking about what's gonna happen next year and try to look at the line items and anticipate you know, are they going to be about the same? Which ones are going to go up? Which ones are going to go down? Mm -hmm. you know, try to try try to forecast. <laughs> right. It's not an easy thing. Well, I mean, the biggest thing with us is, you know, last year we we did 180 more calls. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, a lot of them, all of them weren't ambulance transports where you know we collected revenue. But we still have to pay the people to come in to work them calls yeah. or, you know, people on duty. Sure. And, and that's, that's that's wear and tear on the ambulance, mm -hmm. wear and tear on equipment. Mm -hmm. Extra fuel, all that stuff. It all, right. it all adds up. Yeah. But with and this. I mean, this year we're already up. Um, like I said, we were at 140 calls. This time last year we're at 161. <laughs> yep. So, but I look at it from this perspective. With the level of staffing and the equipment that we have and the budget that we have, we've been able to handle 161 calls at right. this point. And we, we, so far we've spent less, right? So right. I, would, I would think that we could handle that call volume mm -hmm. again um, so that yep. it, we, so. we can assume the call volume is going to go up as some amount, but we, it seems like we haven't met the threshold where our call volume is pushing us to, to have to uh, um, make our costs higher. Like we're still within the margin of safety. I just from, I don't know, that's a, that's a, that's, I have no data to back that up, but it's my, what I'm, it's an observation saying. anyway. An observation, <laughs> I should say. Well, c conversely yeah. to that, I will just say, if, we're, we're, we're missing runs right now. So the theoretically, if, okay. if we got to a point where all those shifts were full and, and again, you're gonna get double ambulance calls that you can't meet, but if all of a sudden a call you're missing, you can take, you, that's gonna jump up, which is also gonna drive your costs up for your medical supplies and your billing. So just keep that in the back of your mind too. So yeah. what, what happens now when we only have one person on staff and we get a call? We pay East we Hampton. Pay East Hampton. Yeah, we pay East Hampton $500 a call. Right, it's either, depending on where the call is in town, or we West call Hill. East Hampton or Westfield. Yeah. And they, and they keep the revenue. If they there is the revenue, revenue, they, they keep, keep the, the insurance revenue. revenue. <laughs> if they do a transport, okay. they keep the revenue. Yeah. I get so, it. Yeah. Yeah. Doug, you had, just to be clear, we have not yet met our <clears throat> service level that we brought to the voters last spring. That is to have two fully qualified people on right. staff all right. the time. Right. Right. So no, we have not. It, we're accomplishing more than you might expect, but we've not ramped up to the level that we projected was necessary and funded by the voters. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Doug, yep. Regarding calls that we weren't able to, to meet that were referred out to the Santa, do we have a count on that, how many calls we missed? 
Say that again. What? So, so, so we don't have a full. We don't have the, the EMT and the paramedic or two paramedics for a shift. And East Hampton has had to respond to a medical yes. call. How long, how often? Can we estimate how often that's happened this year. How often does East Hampton come? Yes. Yeah. How much have we paid out, or how much have we paid out to East Hampton? I um, yeah. Well, this this past month would be January. Uh, it was thirty five hundred dollars. So that's uh, seven calls. Whatever. Seven. Yeah, seven calls. Yeah. Seven yeah. calls for that month, um, anyway. Now again, that's not because all of them. You know, we weren't uh, had anybody on duty. Some of them could have been where our ambulance was already out. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then you know there was a second call. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Good. All right. Well, thanks, Chief. I think okay. we'll, we'll let you go. Much appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Hey, Rich, thank you. Th thank you. I, I know you agonized over that and spent a lot of time with it. And you came <laughs> over and asked a lot of questions. So. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> you too. He's a spreadsheet right. jockey from way back. Yeah. <laughs> Randall Kemp, Highway Superintendent. I'm going to try to go up there so I have some room to spread okay. out. Okay. All right. And just, you know, just... This microphone really goes to the East Hampton media, but in this room, we all have to speak a little bit louder so we can all hear each other. This microphone does nothing for this room. It's just for East Hampton media. So just everybody, just especially with you sitting there where we can't see you, Randall. <laughs> Although I know you have a very loud voice, so that shouldn't be a problem. I'll try to project from the diaphragm. <laughs> no, that right. is the dead Make spot sure in the room, the right there. That's yeah, where I know there is a dead spot in this room. Yeah. And you're still connected, so fine. Yeah. Then you should be able to go over and click on via. Hey, Joy, I wasn't intending to ignore you. Did you have any questions at all? No, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I've just been following along. Okay, very good. Thanks. Now, it's asking the room name. You got to enter 192. You got 168. Ooh. 192. Got 168. 168. Got 10. 10. Got 153. Ten, five, three, enter. Join whatever it is says. Join. Okay, Roto Camp. Now enter room code and that's seven 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 nine. Three sevens and a nine. Yep. Join. Then you just you should get in there. You'll have to it's green. Click on the green tab to present. And then open up your document. Okay. And you're good to go. <laughs> so this mic is on, but I, I'm also projecting to the room, right? Um, so so. <laughs> I think you all got the documents I sent out. I tried to um, give you a really good idea through the three-page narrative as well as the backup um, <laughs> spreadsheets where my budget comes from. So I'm going to go through it pretty quickly um, in the respect of everyone's time. And then if you have questions, I'll stop at the end of each section so people can ask if they have any questions. Does that sound like a good way to progress? Sure. Okay. Okay. So let's start with... All right, let's start with highway. Uh, uh, I'll start with the highway superintendent line. Um, ha, uh, employment agreement has not yet been negotiated, so that is yet to be determined. Um, the assistant to the highway superintendent line uh, reflects 20 hours per week uh, for 52.2 weeks of my assistant who is, works for the highway department 20 hours per week. Um, I went by the guidance and brought her up to the next step, and that is how I calculated that line. Uh, general highway line is a little uh, more hard, uh, a little harder to calculate, so I, I created this spreadsheet for it. Um, basically, I have four existing positions. Um, we weren't giving guidance on um, uh, union per, or union personnel, but uh, I put those who are, were able to up to the next step in anticipation of having some sort of increase. The contract uh, is not negotiated as yet. Correct, um, and it expires on June 30th. It we, expires on June 30th. And, so, uh, and these, we have received that request to, to bargain. Right, so these, these numbers are um, a placeholder. They're uh, a step up for the three people that were still on the scale, um, uh, and it reflects 
33 weeks of general highway wages. And then over on this side, you can see the, the calculation for the 19 weeks of winter roads wages. Um, overtime estimates are based on previous year's data um, of uh, during the summer, we get called in for trees in the road like we did last night. Um, or other uh, flooding, road flooding, things like that. We've been in a trend using more over time. Um, winter hours uh, have not gone up too much, but they have increased slightly. Zoom in a little bit. Um, Good, yeah. There you go. I think I sent you guys all these no. these spreadsheets. We don't have all of we them. We don't have this one. We don't you don't have, have, I didn't send you a, a... You may have sent it to the town, but it didn't make it to the select board. Oh, <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, so what I did here is I took uh, everybody's overtime, took an average per person, um, in addition to the call-in plow drivers, uh, and that's how I came up with a general number in... Um, general highway overtime and uh, winter overtime, which is on this projected hours. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions on wages so far? Just on the, what, sorry, on the open positions, are those budgeted at what you think a new hire would be or would it be so that? I put it over here. I calculated them mid-range. Okay. Um, that would give me some, I mean, I'd, I'd have to work within the budget I'm, I'm given or, or, or appropriated. So um, we, I'd have to figure that out. But at, at, for the purpose of this calculation, it, it's basically mid-range on the salary range in the current contract. Yep. If that makes sense to everyone. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, are we ready to move on to expenses? Sure, whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. General highway expenses, I guess, comes first. Um, I've tracked expenses over a number of years now, and my top is not frozen for some reason. Um, FY14 through FY23 are all actual costs. Uh, FY24 is the request, uh, and then FY25 is a request. Um, and I can send this out if anybody wants to uh, before our next meeting. If you didn't receive this, I put my rationale for where I, w my request numbers over here. They're based on either a averages or projections, or if the cost has gone up. Um, cable, you know, cable went up, but it's a known cost. I have a lot of unknown costs. Uh, we don't ever know how many storms we're going to have, um, where the price of asphalt or diesel is going, and those can reflect a lot of, a lot of ups and downs in my budget, mostly up. Um, I guess I, I said we were going to start at general highway expenses, but my top line is not frozen, so I hope you get generally what, what everything is. Um, it's for pavement. Uh, chip seal, crack seal, overlays, uh, line painting subcontractor for the traffic um, control, the yellow lines and white lines on the road, uh, catch basin cleaning, catch basin repair, culverts and pipe, gravel, stone. I don't know if you can Randall, read all this. Randall, you is there a way to hide those middle columns so we could make this bigger, so we can actually uh, see any of that? Sure. How many years do you want, do you want to see well, any of the we, past years? I don't think years? we need to go back to 2014. No, I don't. <laughs> <No. laughs> 23 is all we care about. A couple, couple of years will be just fine. Just to see oh, 22, because there is a lot of variability in these. Yeah, but we'd, we'd wanted to make these spreadsheets a little bit simpler and more, more sure. reasonable to follow. Thank you. That's going to be a little bit that better more to follow. Readable? Okay. So now I don't have to read them off. You can all read what these are. <laughs> um, I'll scroll down. But, slow. you know, talk, talk about anything that's, you know, changing or, you know, you know a big jump that you've well, noticed over yeah. the last couple of years or whatever it yeah, might be. Yeah, I, I, um, I mean, we've got the contract, right, with the... Um, I'm forgetting who it is. Um, the folks that do all your purchasing. For Cog. For Cog, yeah, Franklin yes. Cog. That uh, my estimates for my work plan for this year have not gone out. I haven't. I haven't um, uh, finalized my work plan. I'm working on it currently, but that's Chapter 90 money, so it doesn't. It isn't. Isn't affected by this anyway. Okay. Um, yep. 
Thanks, Scott. Scott's just sent around the forecast file here. Oh, no, that's what the ding was. Um, General Highway not only includes the things for actual road construction, but um, uh, well, this mower agreement went down because it's expired, so we won't we won't have that anymore. That's a that's one of the few things that went down. Um, Police detail for the roads that we're obligated to have police uh, for traffic control when we're out there. Um, incidental tree work. Uh, a lot of that is under the uh, tree warden budget, but there are some instances where either he doesn't have budget or I need something done. Um, so I like to carry a little bit for tree work. Um, Beaver control, we have several places in town um, where we have beaver dams that threaten to flood the roads. I try to take care of them through non-lethal means. Um, and I've been able to get some grant money for that, but uh, maintenance agreements on those uh, pond leveling structures or beaver deceivers, uh, we have a contract with um, beaver guy in town. Uh, it also includes uniforms per union contract, um, safety equipment, staff professional development training and continuing education required for some of the licenses that my staff maintain. Um, professional associations, those are mostly the ones that I'm a member of, Tri-County Highway Superintendents Association and Mass Highway Association. Um, it's for dues and meetings. Um, we just mentioned Franklin Council of Governments. Um, this line item is all of the organizations. Uh, Greater Boston Police Council is a consolidated purchasing program for vehicles. Um, so that's those sort of things necessary for procurement uh, compliance. Um, and then uh, mileage and tolls, equipment rental, petroleum compliance for our um, diesel dispensing system at the highway department. That's uh, by contract and um, by Department of Environmental uh, Department of Environmental Control. I can't think of what to eat. Protection. Oh, protection. Thank you. Um, Is this the last year we'll be paying that? Um, no. Well, that depends. Steven. We, um, well, I have a, uh, do you want me to get into the capital requests? Because our um, underground, I, yeah, it, this is kind of complex as it is, but we, we may be modifying that going forward, but I have budgeted it as if it's not going to happen. So if it happened, we would yeah. be able to shift that money somewhere else. And just explain that to everybody. Who okay, so a uh, replacement of the underground storage tank, uh, diesel tank that we, uh, currently have its past its lifespan and I have on capital request for an above ground storage tank so th the, the, the compliance cost will not be zero but it should be less there are less compliance costs with having an above ground st storage tank uh, opposed to an underground storage tank right and that's compared to outsourcing and traveling out of town for all your diesel fill-ups right right which is the alternative and not one that I would recommend yep. but I would avoid that line item entirely at some point or reduce it at least engineering um, this is for uh, I've been using this more and more as we encounter problems for which I want a second opinion or require engineering judgment. Um, small engine repairs, uh, other expenses, tools, cones, grass seed, things like that. And um, it, last year we put an earmark for winter overruns um, in the general highway for reasons I can get into when we get to winter roads. Um, does anyone have any question about general highway expenses? Anyone? Well, my only question is, so your bottom line, you're asking for $4,993 more year over year on that line item, right? Is it yes. Yep. Yeah. So you've got on the on the top heading just be clear so the fy24 request at the top of that column in the yellow mm -hmm. that's the current budget. that's the current budget though right it's or not the current it? budget it was the ask i wasn't i wasn't um down here is what uh one of these numbers is uh, 
I hid I hid the column that has what these are. Um, so what well, what we will do at some point in time is take a look at actuals of the expenses against that budget, right? Yes. Well, actual spent right right now. Um, I think you most of the people on the select board already know that. The variability in this budget, I, we always end up shuffling around at the end of the year to cover some overspent cost. For example, this year we have... Um, your extremely expensive expense account for repairs is... Yeah, we, we ran out of our machinery maintenance um, expenses in November because of some pretty costly repairs. Um, and we will def we'll, we're, we're continuing to spend, but we're tracking it in General Highway. Um, and that's, this is simply how our budget has to go. We have things we have to cover, and it takes away from our ability to repair roads sometimes. So I think I articulated that a little more in the budget narrative, hopefully. Uh, we will move on to Machinery maintenance, since that's a good segue. Right. Um, we have an aging fleet. We have replaced equipment in the last couple of years. But if anybody saw my capital re requests, um, the capital requests that were not uh, funded last year were just kicked on to this year. So we have quite a bit of capital requests. And machinery maintenance is one of the reasons why I'm pushing for replacement of machinery. The older it gets, the more costly it is to repair. So machinery maintenance, all of these are pretty self-explanatory. We have to pay for vehicle inspections, um, welding, gas, rental, parts washer service, uh, hydraulic and motor oil, and then the big one is the truck repairs. Um, and that cost is all over the place depending on what breaks. Do you have somewhere? Sweeper was one of the big ones this year, correct? Sweeper and transmission on the uh, backhoe loader, mm. as well as a lot of brake work on single axle dump trucks. Yeah, I wonder if there's a way we can start work to reduce the um, variability in our maintenance by looking at what we have for equipment and trying to predict which which items may have failures coming up. Do we have some type of I mean that's my capital. That's my capital program. We want to replace older equipment, but we we kick, vehicle we kick it down plan. the road, yeah. and so I, I need see. to keep them running. So that's that, why that's why you have such very large variability. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Don't, we don't have enough because we don't we don't we don't have enough funds to fund today. all the capital requests that come in. Our, our so equipment goes well past its usable life. So what you're saying makes a lot of sense based on not funding the the maintenance costs. You're going to have yes a large um, what you want to call it, fix fixing fees. Yeah, I mean, you, I, I think. Mechanical maintenance is is always going to be quite variable, mm -hmm. but yeah, sure. I think you can try and control it by uh, yeah. keeping so not, keeping equipment within its yeah. useful lifespan. <laughs> so out of the right? out of the yeah. out of the things that not, might need replacing, what would be what's your top two or whatever that you've got on capital issue? Um, um, I don't have to. I had I think I had five last year, and did any of them get funded, Ed? I don't remember. Yeah, the heating fun. system got funded. You had uh, one truck that then got. Oh, sold, I think. there was one. There was one that was approved a couple of years ago that you needed more money for. Yeah, that uh, was that. That, that wasn't on capital. That. that was on a special town. Right, that was town, meeting. town meeting. Was it right. through capital? Well, yeah, originally it was through capital. Well, it was a pickup truck. I mean, I can pull up. Yeah, depending on how much time you no, want I to go, I can pull we up the capital. We don't see the capital yet because it goes oh, to the okay. capital committee. So we, do, I don't know what your. If you know, well, there's no money in capital because free cash. Right, there's no money there so, yet. Mean, right, yeah. It's not like you're going to get anything. We're in the same boat we were last year. Every year, we have no no but free cash. So, out of your equipment, what is your the worst thing that you want to get replaced? Twenty as your highest priority. Um, is it the sweeper? Is it something else? It, it was the sweeper, but I know there's an effort to what's going on in schools to to go with the utility for that. Um, so we're trying to repair the sweeper uh, and contract out because it you, it's nice to have a sweeper when you need it mm -hmm. and not have to call uh, the vendor and have them say, oh, we will get there in a week, but I need the sweeper for prep work to have a road paved and I need it tomorrow. Got it. Yes. 
Um, Can I ask one question? Yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. I, I may be splitting hairs, so I just want to make sure I'm looking at this apples to apples. Sure. So the FY24 request was what you presented and requested the last budget round. Yes. But that's not necessarily what was approved. Do we know what Correct. the approvals were? Exactly so if I can just bear with me a minute, sure. if I unfreeze these. If you look at Bradley's spreadsheet, yeah, Bradley's. it should show that. That's not what I meant to do. I'll do. Right. Um, is that, okay, is this see this, these gray? I try and pack a lot of information on these sheets. It's just the way I do it. So my budget, if you see underneath here in the gray, my budget request, and this is what was appropriated at a town meeting, this, the, the bold was what was actually spent. But for, for the, um, but the, the, the ask, um, and actually I did get what I asked for last year in mechanical maintenance. Yeah, the amended yes. budget request. But I've already spent it this year. Okay, but the amended budget, approved budget for road machinery expenses is 96025. Yep. And that's what you had approved for. That, that was approved yes. for. Yes, for last year. Right. Previous years, uh, the actuals, this is actual spent. This is what I uh, asked for, and this is what was appropriated, if you follow me. That's why there's so much data on here. Not an upward trend. Yeah. Right. So what you're looking at now, from what I'm seeing here, is about an eight thousand dollar increase. Yeah. Right. To one hundred and four three fifty. Yeah. The, I mean the, the 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 overspending we have this year, I don't expect that to happen next. Uh, the, right. the following, you know, okay. FY twenty five. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I come about the total. Yep. Go ahead. By um, three year, you can see where I got some of these, my request numbers, three year averages, two year averages, five year averages. Yeah. So, I, mm -hmm. so, I mean, looking at this, the, you know, the year over year ask is a 6.85% increase. But I guess, I guess I do have questions on wages because under general highway wages, it's showing a $13,624 increase. But if you held it, we, where it was, we, we had to cover some other overspend. This, it happens every year. We had no, to do but it that, at the end of the year. Yeah, but that, that shouldn't. I, how would that? Wait, what are you saying? Yeah, highway wages. You, when you for, went through the explanation, yeah. you said you used this year's hourly rate. You only moved, okay, you only moved up those that had room within the steps because sure. the contract's open. Okay. So those that moved up within the steps, that represents $13,624 of additional money needed. Yeah, we're looking at the. Are you looking at this? Sounds right. We got here. that. Uh, this number here, two hundred and thirty. Uh, the two forty. Yeah. yeah. It's six hundred and fifteen dollars. To go in two forty four, but okay. Yeah, it was two thirty seven last year. Two thirty. Uh, no, sorry, wrong. Uh, 230, right? Yeah. Yep. But uh, I just answered it myself because Randall did say there were some people there that are have room on the scale. And you yes, move them these up. Three people, these three people went up to the next okay, yeah. to the next step. But the first one is frozen. Yes. Because the contract hasn't been settled yet. No, well well, there's no more he's on maximum set. Right. And the yeah. contract's up. Yeah. So yeah. in theory that'll get addressed during the contract negotiation. Could, could, yeah. yeah. But I wanted to give you I didn't want to give you the same numbers yeah. last year when I we can all presume that it's so really, the only big ask that you're asking year over year in here is the four, is an additional forty thousand dollars in the MS four storm water management program. Otherwise, your budget's relatively flat. As we look yeah. at what, what right? yeah, as we look at what Bradley's plugged in, but yeah, okay, Scott, you had a question. Yeah. Uh, just looking at the, uh, the machinery maintenance expenses, I know that you've sure. had the uh, mechanic position open for a while now. Uh, how much? If that position was filled, how much would you be able to kind of keep internally versus sending work out to uh, vendors? That's a good question um, that I don't have a really good answer for. Uh, it's going to depend on the uh, you know technical virtuosity of whoever gets hired, their ability, um, because I'm sure there's still going to be things that need to be sent out. Uh, uh, the more advanced that equipment gets with computers and special, you know, there's, there's proprietary things in, in vehicles that you have to send them out. Um, I would expect it to be less, but I can't give you any kind of a sense. You know, you would, you would hope it would be less to do stuff in-house. 
what the person could could handle but we don't have any applicants anyway so it's a <laughs> moot point okay. at this point it, just like highway expenses in your speak up dan Remember? Yep. To everybody in the audience here, right here in the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> so just under highway expenses, sure. um, in your budget wish list two, mm -hmm. it goes down by um, 70K. Okay, so that is a quirk of the way that the select board wants to do oh. um, so for the general new wages as opposed to winter wages. We put that placeholder. Okay, let me back up. Winter wages and winter roads are some of the few municipal accounts that can be overspent with the select board declaration of a winter emergency. It's, there is some rule in the Department of Revenue that you have to, you want to, do you want to take this so I don't? Sure, so for the, for the two new members that we have, whatever you budgeted for the previous year, you have to at least match that amount every year going forward this is according in order to the DOR, in order to do a deficit spend in the middle of the of winter storms. If we were to add that 70000 in whatever bucket we want to into those winter roads, and then two years down the road we say, you know what, we haven't spent that, or for whatever reason we cut 5000 that year we could not deficit spend okay. on it. So general practice is well i don't past practice here was you never put any more money in there yeah, yeah. and then you had it and he was able to cover it because we can't get for he 50 percent of his staff is missing right. so he's out he's already got built in one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of surplus money mm -hmm. and the argument last year was that seventy thousand represented the real number than he needed, so we wanted to at least keep the budget whole, so we moved it to that line item, so if in a crisis we had to cut, we could. Randall, properly so, would prefer us to fund those line items <laughs> as a department. Because what I worry about is we fund it at the same level, expenses continue to go up, so it looks like I'm managing the winter roads budget horribly. <laughs> there we go. And, and I want the town to acknowledge that there is a real yeah. cost for sure. yeah. managing our winter, winter roads. Yeah. And, and, and John's got 99 and 9 tenths percent of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Enough for Stephen. Well, the, the caveat is, yes, we cannot declare our own snow and ice deficit if we go down. Uh, it, you could, but you don't want to do this because we know how fast they ask. Once you drop it, you can't declare it, but you can petition the legislature to allow you to deficit spend. And like I say, we all, we all know how quickly they act in the, middle and, of the and, in the middle of, especially in the middle of winter. So you don't want to do that under any circumstances, really. So while, while I'm, I'm fine with however finance and select board wants to handle it, I do want there to be a recognition that there is a cost to winter roads maintenance and it, and it, and it increases every year. So yeah. that's why there's a shifting of those between the request and the wish list. And it might even make sense that every year you just, you put in a 2% increase. Percent. I mean, I've got a pretty good amount of data to show you what it, how it go, you know, a trend line or whatever. So you can get a reasonable <coughs> cost where you but, hope it doesn't. Right, but in theory, with uh, global warming, we're not going to have those winters anymore, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you can't see me down here, but that was tongue in cheek. <laughs> okay, because honestly, we've been spending more on treatment events. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the price of salt. Because we, we, go, we go through these rain events, and then it washes all the salt off the road, yeah. right. and I have to go out again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have more freeze and fall. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So yeah. More yeah. 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 And, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's becomes more ice events, which means rather than plowing, you're actually adding, you know, treatment or whatever, which is additional cost. But uh, while we're on the subject of snow and ice deficit, we went through this a couple of weeks ago, and you, you reached out because one was under, but it's combined. I just because I am now leaving, Scott would be the one that can actually. <laughs> Other than the select board declare a snow and ice deficit, uh, any idea where you are right right now? I don't have that number on me. Um, I know with the wa the wages, unspent wages, yeah. we 
are in okay shape. Okay. Last time we checked, I haven't. Okay. We haven't had any more snow, so I haven't ordered any more salt. And okay. That's one of the big, it, big hits. It just became a quick mentoring moment to bring Scott aware of, aware of that. So thank you. Right on. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah. Did we? Uh, we kind of. I lost where I am. Um, so we kind of touched on winter yeah. winter expenses. Um, but Randall, just because it is a big change, it's a four, you're at, I know why, but you're asking for 40,000 more in MS4 storm. Can you just spend a minute on why? MS4? Yeah. Uh, storm water management, you're, you want to go from 28,000 to 68,000. So for that, we're going to separate in 2019. We've got to Got to be your permit compliance. No, isn't this to get the? Uh... Yeah. Oh, so street sweeping. Yeah, uh, we we have done it in house, and since our sweeper is um, in the shop still, uh, last year we ended up having to go out of house for it. I think even this year we will be contracting out for at least a portion of it. Um, the sweeper, it's nice to have, but. I want it to be able to run when I need it for like the prep work, right. for instance, when I, when I need to pave a road, the coordination between getting the, the paver to come in, I need to be able to act pretty fast to get that road swept up and prepped for the paving company. Um, and it's a lot easier if I have that piece of equipment in house than trying to go outside. Whereas the, the uh, street sweeping required by the MS4 permit is a little easier. I can get them in, they can do their job, and it's not as time sensitive as. Right. And just uh, if I remember right, the last time you priced out a street sweeper was about two hundred seventy-two thousand dollars. Roughly three hundred. Three hundred thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we paid forty thousand for ten years, we could have got a new one. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And usually you're trying to do street sweeping twice a year, is that right, around town? We're required by our permit to do it twice a year. Okay. Any questions, anybody? No? At least in the jurisdictional areas, mm -hmm. which yeah. I can go into if you need me to. No, okay. okay, what else you get there? Okay, we, we touched on winter roads. Um, I think you, you all know what the expenses are. It's um, salt, sand, uh, chips if we we sometimes use on dirt roads plow blades um don't know if everybody and everybody realizes this but the blade that's running against the road wears down it's abrasive so uh winter patch uh plow subcontractor we use to plow the school and take care of all of the sidewalks that the municipality owns and town hall steps and walks is what that plow stop contractor is. And uh, occasionally we do get stuck and we need to be towed. So just go back to the, the contractor again. I just want to be sure I'm seeing this. Um, da -da -da. Uh, 35,000, right? Yeah. Um, it was, there's a trend, an upward trend, because they're coming out more. I've budgeted 50,000. Um, because we have added Hello. Sidewalks in the past four years of the Glendale Road Conservation Area, Pomeroy, Pomeroy Meadow Road Conservation Area, Conant Park, and Cemetery on Route 10. We vote, we keep adding sidewalks, and we have so our cost goes up there. And how long is the contract for with that company? Is it just a yearly contract or a three-year? We signed a through. Did we sign an extension? Yeah, we just uh, signed a new contract with them for three years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what the fifty thousand is, or it's it's the contract is based on inches of snow. There's a there's a. A formula for right. okay. each event, but yep. if in general, I'm I'm yeah. budgeting fifty thousand for it. And, and you just signed a three-year contract, so we're we're honored. We have to honor that for three years, assuming there isn't an exit clause. But at the end of that three years, if you were fully staffed, would you still need to utilize that service? Yes, we've always used this applying subcontractor. My staff being fully staffed. Yeah. All right, so that's not a potential cost savings. No. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Any other questions on winter roads? I think we, we kind of covered the winter wages before. Um, oh, my building expenses is uh, 
higher here. But we know it's an older building. Yes. Buildings there. There's some. Oh, I should hide these again. Um, it's everything you see here, um, and my justification is justifications are over here. Uh, I think most of it's self-explanatory. If anybody has a question on any particular line, what's the biggest increase here? Biggest increase? I uh, did it increase all that much? For th five percentage, I, it went up like fourteen percent or so. Um, I mean, electricity has gone up a lot, if you can see from FY twenty, um, which was a question I had. It, the cow pow credits we have, is that due to expire or be renegotiated at some point? I feel like it's gone up pretty significantly over time, at is my perception. At some point, I believe both the net metering and the cow power was at, cow power was at least 10 years. So that would be out oh, right okay. around 2008, uh, yeah, 2008, I wish, uh, 2028, 2029. Oh, so a little, mm. little ways to go on our little current ways one. To go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think heating oil, you can see, can be pretty variable because we have, what, eight bays in the mechanics bay, and if they're all poorly insulated, and we try to keep them at, like, 54 so diesel doesn't gel. Um, some of this, hopefully, if um, we get the heating design back and uh, it gets funded fully, we'll have a more efficient heating system. Now, didn't, didn't we already budget for that? I thought so. We budgeted for it, and then we, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't enough. Our yeah, estimate well, we got was a poor estimate. Yeah, it was kind of what was originally done and was funded was, you know, basically through a contractor's estimate, uh, which actually found out that really wasn't adequate and didn't address the efficiency there. So we're going through uh, an engineering study currently at the highway garage. For heating design. It's underway though, so I don't know. I don't know what kind of savings we could see there, but one would presume that mm -hmm. it would be more efficient. Okay. And I think that's, that's it. Those are probably your, your big costs right there, are utility related, yeah. Are you going to touch on transfer, uh, transfer station tonight? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll finish off with highway. If anybody has any questions on highway, I can go to transfer station. Just out of, out of curiosity for the looking into cost savings across the, do we have any, do you have any cell phones in your site? Yes. Um, cell phone. My phone two, phone. my two foremen have, oh, well that's, this is the, the facility phone oh, bill. Um, General Highway. Uh, I think you had a thousand dollars. Right here. Cell phones. We are under the, um, I was going to mention this, but I just let uh, the fire chief oh, without yeah. butting in. I know that uh, police and myself are under state pricing for cell phones. Oh, okay, great. So, so we, it's been negotiated for us. And that's awesome. Thank complies you. Complies with procurement regulations. Okay. So you'd imagine, maybe I would find the same thing if I looked at the fire department? Or I can. Yeah, I can it. forward the information of who we deal with. That'd be good. Okay. Just one um, sure. On that, uh, we, we have two cell phones. I don't take a cell phone. Yeah. I use my own. Yeah. But not for. What about for. <laughs> do we have um, the internet service down? Yes. Do you pay for that? Yeah, for, uh, that would be under building. Internet is here. Okay. It's eighty nine ninety nine per month. And IT support was nothing. IT support has been handled through town hall. Um, I guess we had a contract or, or, or a preferred vendor that Ed preferred I use, so um, I put it down to zero. Okay. Is that going to, that's not going to keep on with that particular vendor that's been there, right? That's going to come into our overall town hall improvement or not? With the IT managed services that we want to look for? Yeah, uh, his laptop will always be covered under uh, that vendor's services. Uh, the other computer that's over there would be basically a la carte, but we would use the same vendor. That vendor or a future mm -hmm. vendor? What? That particular vendor listed there, Northeast oh, IT? Oh, no, no, or? North, no, this is, this is uh, so I'm sorry, I didn't update that particular line item. That's who I've used in the past. Oh, okay.
uh, so I'm understanding that the IT managed services, if we go that route, that's going to incorporate also some. Yeah, one of, one of my suggestions to the IT technology committee and the select board is basically under policy that we require all town departments that have, you know, computers, printers, or, or what have you, to go to a single ticket system. They are not con contracting or contacting, you know, their own vendors. Uh, that probably will come through the town administrator's office and be passed off as a ticket. Yep. Okay. Thank you. The only, not to keep us here all night, but the only other question was about the administ admin assistant highway. Is that going up by like? 11 percent the salary or did i just calculate it wrong um i don't know what the calculation is i know we had a, a mid-year adjustment last year okay. um that could be the difference you're seeing because my calculation only goes up one step at, uh from current wage okay so i'm guessing that might be the difference all right. or it's a transcribed number oh, i can if you email you me buy that for three thousand. I don't know if that shows the the, um, year, right? the amount that was allocated at the, the special town meeting. Maybe it doesn't. I, don't, I can we, I, don't, I can double check that and get back to. You. Seems like a big jump. Yeah, the the mid year adjustment's not in what you're looking in. Oh, okay. it's not. It's not okay. in that number. Thank you. That explains that. Okay. Anybody else? Any Anything else on this one? Okay. Because if you thought this was complex, wait till we start talking about transfer station. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> you got one? Oh, we got one, Ed. Ed, we got. Yeah, it's a grand. Yep. Do that. This nope. is not okay. as hard. Sorry. <laughs> thanks. thanks for trying to be there for me. There's three minutes left in the meeting, so. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, cool here. we schedule everything to stop at 8 o'clock, guys. <laughs> Your power just shuts right off. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, but yeah. We do want to touch a little bit, and, and I know you haven't fully made up the budget for the transfer station yet because there's yeah, a few I unknowns. Need, I need guidance. But I think we need to Ditto. just sort of talk about some of the challenges you're having over at the transfer station in terms yes. of um, that being run as an enterprise fund, et cetera. So. so the 24 amended budget is what? suspect numbers that there's a reality that's different than that is that the premise for this for oh you have a completely different thing for which for the um, transfer station or which yes. i don't for for i'm sorry which one proposed i was looking at bradley's spreadsheet to uh, continue or begin the oh, okay transfer station in mine has nothing in there yet <laughs> No, he sent a separate. That's what I'm looking. For. Yeah, I don't have. That. Okay, he sent mine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Got it. I'm gonna be my last night. Get out of here. I probably shouldn't have done. Uh oh, it's not the right <laughs> one. <laughs> no, is it plugged in? Yeah. Oh, yes. Now it is. Okay. Transfer station. Um, everybody's aware that the transfer station is an enterprise fund. Um, what does that mean? So the, I don't know. Serious? Okay, so know. it's a fee-based system where the fees are supposed to cover the expenses. It's not funded by the general fund. Okay. Or correct something that we're going to muddy up. Well, the, an enterprise fund should be self-sufficient, but in the event that it does not become self-sufficient, the fallback and guarantor is the general fund, which means we're moving tax dollars that aren't meant to go there mm -hmm. to support that okay. enterprise fund ah. and you're going to find out that we've spent $172,000 of tax dollars that we could have possibly hired somebody in Concom or a planner, yeah. but we have to augment the transfer station and well technically you for don't all the right to, reasons that's what we're well we can't run a now. deficit we gotta well let's let's talk about it let's understand okay. the we're issue we're not making any decisions tonight I, <laughs> I, so all i'm talking you, about no, is no, historically let's have randall present yeah. there, there, there's two major things that have been that have been going on the um recycling market where we used to get um either no refund or, or a small pittance of revenue from has completely fallen out and we now have to pay a recycling processing fee. That's one factor that has increased cost. 
The second one is just trucking and disposal costs have gone up. You can see here we've gone like it was pretty stable, 97, 90, 100, 106, 106, 110, 124, and I'm projecting 125 for next year. That may be conservative. In addition, um, less people are using the transfer station. Um, for reasons I don't know if I understand, it may be convenience, um, just the changing patterns of people that are moving into town, the convenience of having somebody do curbside pickup. Our permit numbers have dropped over time, so you're trying to spread more fees or increasing costs over less people. It's not working. So what has happened is we have started running deficits. Um, we increased bag costs last year in an attempt to bring revenues up, um, but with less people and increasing costs. I project that, uh, so the 33 and the 56,000 are actual deficits we ran in FY22 and FY23. FY24, even with the um, bag, in, uh, the bag increases. That was like $2 or something, was it? Yes and a focus on trying to increase um, revenues down there by being um, very aware of what people are throwing away and charging them appropriately, I still project that we may run a $48,000 deficit. For 25, I started building a budget um, that included, um, I looked at one of the closest co competitors is Valley Recycling. Uh, in Northampton, they have a fee structure that is slightly different than ours. They don't charge a permit fee, um, but I still try to compare apples to apples. Their bag fees are, are higher. You've got uh, a tab on that, right? The fee comparison tab? Yeah. I do. Um, do. Do you want me to make it public? Uh, well, I, I, I can if you, if you want to see it. So I compared... Um, I the higher here. <laughs> well, I mean... Are we going to try and encourage more people to go somewhere else? I mean, that's not my goal. That would yeah. hasten the demise. Um, well, I think just to understand where we are given other competitors. I mean, okay. it, we may not be for the curbside service. So here, one, here's Valley Recycling's cost. fees, um, our current fiscal fee schedule, and this is what I was proposing for modest increases. Um, I can but even if you just look at what another recycling center charges versus what you're charging, just to show right. it's, it's, the differences it's, there. It's not that much higher. Uh -huh. okay. And so even if we brought our, our, uh, our fees up to competitive, to be competitive with Valley, mm -hmm. um, I still mm -hmm. project. Um, it's kind of hard to project tipping fees because it's all based on sure. what people bring in. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a, uh, that's kind of a, a guess. Yep. The, the tipping fees. Yep. Um, I just guessed at twenty five thousand, but I could project out um, permit fees, uh, the increase in permit fees based on if the same number of people bought permits this year, which doesn't match the trend. It's been decreasing, yep. um, and then uh, bag fees raising them uh, again. Uh, two levels comparable with Valley Recycling, I would still run, in my projection, a thirty-four and a half thousand dollar deficit. You might be asking, well, why don't we just raise fees more? I think what that would do is hasten people going somewhere else. Yep. Um, so I guess my question is, where does everyone think we should go? Is is should we try and raise fees? These are the scenarios I can see. Should we raise fees to the point where we would try to um, not be in a deficit, break even, even though it may hasten people going elsewhere? Should we close the transfer station now and cut our losses? Or does the town think it an important service uh, that they would fund $34,500? Those are, that's my question of how to, how to progress. I have a question. Maybe we can talk about the expenses because sure. we talked about the transfer station before and the comment was we have to keep it going because we have to 
I don't know what the right term is. Oh. Service the, the the existing landfill. Right. Uh, okay. So a that fee that cost associated with that. Yes. That is under where is it? So like if we were clients and consulting costs. Right. So if we were going to shut it down, we'd still pay. You'd pay eleven thousand five hundred, and year. you would need to contract out for town trash. Like town hall, fire, oh, I police, yep. highway. Yeah. Because right now the highway department collects it and then assesses a fee that goes back to the transfer okay. station. Okay. I'm gonna muddy the wires real quickly sure. here because okay, and I, I'm gonna simplify that. Basically, decide valuable service, not valuable service. Do we assume the $12,000 and just pay that and do away with it? So simplify that thought process. It might get you to the end. But to complicate the deficit calculation, Town Hall pays to the highway department currently $3,200 in a year for that service. I have hesitated to go out and contract to find out what it would take to what the cost would be to actually change over to a dumpster uh, or barrels that get picked up every two weeks, every four weeks here, because I know this particular situation, but we have other departments that are doing the same thing. Because I belong to the Cost Efficiencies Committee, I really believe that probably could save on the cost side Maybe the cost would be about two thirds of what we're paying to the highway to do that. Transfer or transfer station through the highway. So guess what? If we do that to save the money, it increases that deficit. Okay, that all being said, valuable service, not valuable service. And I'm gonna suggest if you really wanna keep it, and if there probably is a valuable service here, they, perhaps the way to look at it of closing that gap. And yes, it's probably going to take some taxpayer dollars to come over to supplement that, which you can do with an enterprise fund. You just can't do a lot of a, a big portion of it is perhaps it's taking a look at things. Uh, and some of these are going to be minor changes rather than doing selling bags, go to bag stickers. OK, uh, a lot of complaints about the bags that cheap they tear they're double bagging anyway go to the stickers probably a less of a less of a price and a price savings over the bags not a whole heck of a lot the other thing you can do if you want to take cash out of the mix which i am convinced at some point in time the auditors are going to tell us they don't want at the transfer station uh, being handled is you can actually use those whatever the value is of the bag stickers to go towards to pay off the tipping fees as, as long as you transferred through. Uh, use some taxpayer dollars. The other thing I really wonder about, do we have a community, you know, close to us that maybe does not have a their own transfer station uh, and does not have trash pickup? Could we offer this service to that community and therefore expand and maybe start on an upper trend are uh, permitting efficiencies of cost. Right, exactly. So I, I think if scale. you come to the conclusion you would like to keep this as a valuable service, uh, really look at this mm -hmm. at a three and four tier level to close that gap and then close that gap mm -hmm. with the tax dollars. Well, your, your comment about stickers is interesting. I think I, I'm aware of some other communities that do do that, and I think that's a comment that I know I've, I've received from a couple of newcomers to town saying, you know, I've got my trash bag in my in my kitchen garbage can, but then I got to take it out yeah. and I got to put it in the one for the dump for the sorry for the transfer station too. Um, and it's like this double bagging is, is crazy. We're just, you know, bad for the planet. So, you know, yeah. So, yeah, that so you there, there's just, already that you, kind you of get your garbage to container to, to match the bags from the transfer station. <laughs> And you just use that bag, the small bags. But so far, right. the, so far the transfer station bags have not been terribly sturdy for Three household. years I haven't had a single problem, or seven oh, years, I've, no problem. And I got three kids. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I also don't most, try to put 100 people, pounds in a 20 pound Most people don't tend to bag. use their transfer station bag in their household I, kitchen, as far as I know. But 
who knows? I, well, I shouldn't say most. Some people don't. So anyway, the question came up, though, as, as to why would we want to keep on using, you know, two bags and all that kind of, you know, wasting plastic and recycling and all that kind of stuff. So but. so I do have a, a, one comment on this, and it's not a, uh, just for the point of discussion, is I, I've talked to other um, recycling coordinators um, at the meetings, and um, what will happen with stickers is you don't need to affix them to the bag. And so people will wait till the attendant's not looking and palm the sticker. So you're losing, you lose revenue really easy there. Whereas if I look out that window and I, you check it frequently, you're gonna see the yellow bags in there and you're gonna see if somebody doesn't use a town bag very quickly and you can mm -hmm. catch them. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's something I, I, we struggle with is uh, I've covered the transfer station, and people will wait until you have your head turned and throw stuff into the open tops. It's, mm -hmm. You have to be very proactive down there in order to get revenue. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I would worry about things that would make it easy to lose revenue. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, stickers would allow people to use any size garbage bag, whereas right now we have very controlled 15-gallon option and a 30-gallon option. Mm -hmm. So we it's apples to apples well everybody or, pays you pay two dollars or uh, whatever it is for a small bag everybody pays that same it wouldn't be a sticker where they would pay one price and then somebody could use a you know a 35 pound contractor well, bag right and somebody else you might using need a, more than one sticker on that bag that would be the only other way well, that they would yeah, do that but then controlling that, that yeah i know not enforcing that would be a challenge yeah yeah that's true before we leave the compliance and consulting i did have one more question sure how many years do we know how how long do we have to pay that fee so like per perpetuity like how long do we my guess is yes yeah all right it's capping it's it was yeah because you, it was you capping the existing landfill, landfill. we do That's so some of the monitoring great. that goes on there is you have you have residences around there and so you have to monitor that landfill gas is not migrating underground so we have wells sentinel wells that are checked uh, I, think, I believe quarterly and then every other year we have groundwater sampling to make sure there's no leachate um, can you, uh, contaminant plume yeah. emanating from the transfer okay. station yeah. so and that so is a groundwater cost for the as long as this town is going to exist that's yes. great but why is my yeah. my cursor not moving if you see every other year it's Eleven to twelve thousand. On the odd years, it's much less. Groundwater okay. sampling for the um, different constituents we taste, we have to test for, is very expensive. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. One well, way to look at this. Is <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts about that? I mean, you know, one thing we. I mean, I don't know. Part of me feels like. We, I don't know whether any kind of a public education campaign would help, whether a quick survey out, you know, survey monkey would help just to get some, in, you know, get some input from town residents as to, you know, what's the level of interest. Some people may not even know that the transfer station exists. I mean, you've been lauded for the great recycling program that's going on over there, which is pretty amazing compared to some of the communities around us. And I, I guess I would hate to see that all disappear. I, I, mean, I would as I'm, well, honestly. Major. <laughs> I, I realize we don't get paid a lot for it, but people are people are using it for sure. The people that use it, I, I'm 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 pretty proud of like, yeah, the different yeah. ways we've been able to keep yeah. things out I mean, of land. Thousands of pounds of textiles and all those reports books you put out. I mean, books, all that so. kind of right. stuff. That but people can do that at other facilities as well. I mean, but or, we're less costly right now in terms of what, well, comparing that costly one to the town, we have a, we're running in a deficit, but, but we're, yeah, but we, we don't know what the price is for like USA recycling or some other curbside pickup, you know, in comparison probably, but there's other benefits. If you have to like shared dumpsters between yeah. residents or something, then you're going to be less likely to do the recycling. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And at some point, I don't know, uh, yeah. People are going to have to recycle. I don't know how judiciously the, the trash haulers are currently checking whether people are recycling. Um, I know it gets done I don't at the think transfer station. It doesn't really get recycled, I'll bet you it doesn't. <laughs> the, the no, I, can't, I can't say, I don't Most have enough information. Most services in town now have automated trucks, yep. and in they go, and it's just, it's, you know, 
Right. It's a long word, but it's fungible. It all gets mixed together. They're yeah. not checking anyone. They're not checking. No, I, I, have, I have two different cans. I have a recycled yeah, can. Yeah, but it all goes in the same truck. No, it doesn't. Two different trucks combine and pick up one right. can. And they don't look to see if you have recycling in your trash. It just goes straight in. But they provide me two different cans, so the, the cost savings to me is to utilize both cans. Right? So awesome. why would I? You have a dumpster. I'm not talking about. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. That. Like an apartment. So even a dumpster. You have two or three families that say, well, yep. let's just pay, you know, $100 a month or whatever it is for a dumpster and we'll all use it. It's mm -hmm. cost. But then you just, everything goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just easier, you know. So we're so spending. You're not recycling and you're not taking those things out of. Right. But then we're, we're spending, well, I'll say 50K. I, I'm not sure what the exact number is as a town every year. Um, to avoid some people not recycling, right? It seems like a, a very costly way to avoid that. How, how, how many people would you say use the transfer station on Wednesdays versus Saturdays? I know where you're going with this. I don't know if I have the numbers for that, but there, I, I know if you, I know you know that we used to have the transfer station open three days a week, and as a cost saving measure, I quit. Was it Thursdays? Right? We stopped. We stopped Thursdays, and the backlash from that was. I only have Thursdays off, so I know there are people that don't want to go on the weekends. Um, I don't want to stereotype, but a lot of elderly go on Wednesday because yeah. there's less people there. Mm -hmm. I just wondered if, it, if you feel that there's enough traffic to make it worth being open 10 hours as it is on Saturday, mm -hmm. or if that's a possible, yeah. like still be open, but maybe, maybe I have to, I'd have to, hours. I'd have to do an analysis on the revenue um, mm -hmm. on Wednesdays as opposed to Saturdays, which is something I can do to answer your mm -hmm. question. Well, just the traffic, not necessarily the, or just count the traffic. revenue, but like, how many people are there between, like each, you know, during which hours are the busiest? What's your busiest hours on a Wednesday? So, yeah. the yeah. common argument in why I stopped using the transfer station was because you had to buy a, tick a sticker, but you can only use it certain days of the week. And I wasn't always able to make it on those days of the week, where if I went to another place, I could go any day of the week, except for Sunday. Mm -hmm. See, it's part of my Saturday routine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for a lot of my life is pretty busy. I don't always have a, a Saturday morning to go do something. How many, uh, um, Randall, how many permits are out there right now? Um, 900, uh, oh, wait a minute, 24. So, right now, um, well, I've projected based on previous right. trends, I, I, right. close to a thousand. 995 is my best guess of what we'll sell by the end of the fiscal year. So, in theory, that's, that's not over 900 households. Yeah, like a thousand people. Yeah. And what I hope is this conversation doesn't cause people to, because we're talking about next fiscal year. Yeah, we but, have to make a decision uh, 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 before yeah. July 1st. Okay. I hope that people aren't already thinking, right. oh, I've got to go, go go look at other options. No, that's not where I was going with that. So you got 900 there. That's that's 900 households. The average household in East, in Southampton is three people. That's 2,700 people. So you're talking about possibly making changes that affects 50% of this community. So I get that the numbers are going down, but you're impacting 50% of the community. Some, something like that. I think at one point, Lucy told us, I, I may be wrong, but what sticks in my head is we have like 2,500-ish households okay. for, for like 6,000 people. So yeah. 2,500 households, and if 1,000 households an are getting permits, uh, I have right, a, uh, is what we're seeing, 40%. maybe. So the way I look at it is, those, <laughs> it's not a small that, number, right? The, and they're voters. Yeah, right. If you use the transfer yeah, station, the people who use the transfer station could, should cover the costs of using the transfer station. So if 50% of the people are using it, then I would assume, if you subtract the cost that is the maintenance for the, the burden of our forefathers and their the use of, of the land in that, that landfill, then the remainder cost should be a clear number on it. It should break even as an enterprise fund. Yeah. I guess you know one question too, and I don't know if anybody knows what's what the big picture is in the recycling market. I mean, I know China's had a role in this, and all these fees have dropped in terms of whatever we're able to get for revenue. But is there any? bigger projection, any bigger picture out there in terms of this turning around sometime? Because I think the, the increase of telling, or not telling, but in, in educating people to do more recycling, I think is, to me, it's only increased over the number of years to go do more recycling. 
but how how is that going to be? So what I've read in the in industry uh, newsletters is that um, people are always looking for ways to to use. Um, waste or recycling streams, right? Mm -hmm. But what holds a lot of people back is contaminant, contaminants. So I know I try to put out educational posts on Facebook a lot because we have, we have the mixed um, container stream, mm -hmm. which is cans, bottles, and uh, certain plastic containers. There is so much minutia of what is and isn't recyclable that I would guess, and it is purely a guess, maybe a third of what goes into that is not recyclable. Mm. And so that goes to the Springfield Materials Recycling Facility, which is who we're contracted with. <laughs> That's where our recycling goes. And they sort it. They have to sort out all that contaminant, all the contaminants, mm. and then they have to dispose of them. Mm -hmm. And that is why they instituted the, um, that mm -hmm. cost that we never had, the recycling processing fee. Mm -hmm. If we could find a way to educate people to get um, more pure, uh, recycling streams, I think you could actually create markets for them. Mm -hmm. And not just me. I mean, that's what the newsletter yeah, says. What the industry well. says. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any thoughts, comments? Anybody? I don't. Well, how do we just stay the norm? Yeah, no, I think this is just, at least good to bring it up tonight. I don't think we have any, I think we have to do it's a little bit more thinking. No, I, do, I do like the idea of um, piggybacking on you know, what Dan was saying, though. You know, the, the breaking out the cost of the. Um, uh, the old dump, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that's the town's responsibility to pay when they capped it. Figuring out what the true cost yeah. of trash removal to town facilities are, because I think the fire department, they're only 500 bucks, and I don't know if that's because they're driving it there themselves in a truck yeah. that was already supposed to be turned in well, and not on the road. Uh, hold on, Randall. Okay, sure. And then the police department was something like $3,000, and I don't know what's going on over at Norris. In the park? But those are real numbers. I mean, so that should be taxpayer's responsibility, getting the garbage out of the... What is that number? I don't think it's going to be the year 35. <laughs> but it is something. And then and then I would go... I mean, whatever the rest of it is, we either... Even if we gradually say, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to have to work this in in fees, and it's going to be a three-year approach, so we're going to subsidize for three years to get to this spot. Um, I didn't figure out what we can do, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor of closing the transfer station. I think closing the transfer station is going to result in trash being on the side of the roads throughout town. I would agree. Um, mattresses, TVs. So I think we need to see if we can figure out a way to do it. Um, and that, that's my two cents. Well, and one, maybe one of your points is, is just that, that 11005 that compliance consulting fee, because that was for the capping of the old, <clears throat> old landfill, that maybe that is now an inherent town cost. I will, tell, I will say that prior to, um, there was a, Donna might be able to speak on this more, uh, more eloquently, but we had a, um, we had a loan for the capping that was paid over how many, do you know how many years? 20. 20 years? And transfer station operations paid off that loan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, it's, that was a cost that the enterprise fund funded what right. I would and, argue could be right, but uh, Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not in favor of going back and trying to collect 20 years worth of revenue. But at the, at the time, the street, you know right, I mean? but, but at that point in time, the Enterprise Fund was able to absorb it all. Yeah. But we're at a point now with changing conditions and yes. Chris's yes, point with, world. with China not buying the boatloads of stuff from us anymore. Yeah. Whatever the reason is, right. we, we need to readjust and, and I say I'm in support of keeping the transfer station open if we can figure this out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would so, like to underline that mm -hmm. I'm entirely supportive of mm -hmm. that. It would reduce the enterprise fund deficit, but it would also reflect that that's a forever cost for the town, mm -hmm. whether or not we operate the transfer right. station. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a legacy obligation, and uh, we should take that off the table. It's not part of the transfer station. When evaluating whether the transfer station mm -hmm. is a subsidized activity, it's not fair to burden it with yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Any other comments or thoughts on that? Anything else you wanted to raise tonight, Randall, or have we no, covered but just, the gamut on just, this? No, but if anybody wants these, these my, my calculation sheets to go over I, them. Scott, um, just Scott, send those around. Okay. So we, yeah. Or if you, there's anything you'd like me to analyze that I can get you for data, mm -hmm. um, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to work because I, I, I need help. I, I'm looking for guidance. Let's try to take that approach of what what the heck can we do in terms of fees and costs to make it break yeah. even over the next three years. So in three years time, if we do say we're gonna subsidize the costs between now and then, what does what would that fee structure look like and or payment structure. Well, you've put together some, some thoughts about some changes in fees, like sticker fees and things in general. Some just fees, ideas. but also some of the stuff we've touched on tonight, maybe yeah. um, East Hampton is a no responsibility community. They, they do all curbside pickup. They don't have a transfer station. Um, maybe we should entertain out of town people possibly using it because I think if we can get more permits sold, mm -hmm. we can capitalize on some of those economies of scale. Right and go the opposite way from where we're going now. Mm -hmm. What would be the use case for those residents? Is it going to be mostly bulk items that you think they would take advantage of? Um, for, for East Hampton? Yeah. For anybody coming yeah. in from another community? Um, I mean, I think they're all private haulers, so they would. They are private haulers. Yeah, it's not a town. Um, I understand. Yeah. As a town resident who doesn't have a sticker, I would pay money to go throw something away that doesn't have a sticker. So the way I've approached that before, Dan, is yeah. that I feel like it's a package deal because we've had people yeah. saying, well, I want to come down and, and, and throw my recycling in. It doesn't cost you anything. Oh. Well, now it does. That's good. Right? And, and there's certain things like, um, here's an example, motor oil. We don't charge a fee or we charge a fee currently over five gallons because motor oil is pretty hazardous. And if people are disposing of it improperly, yeah. then the you know, you're going to have environmental yeah, impacts yeah, of that. So we will subsidize that cost yep. in order to have people not dumping it down catch basins. Yep, yep. And so that's what I really feel strongly that it's a package deal. Like we pick up mattresses. Mattresses are another subsidized item because we don't want to be picking them up on the side of the road anyway because then we get zero mm -hmm. revenue where right now we get 20. So, yeah, that's why I see, I, I really see this package deal. Um, I'd love if there was some other way to do it. <laughs> On topic of revenue enhancement, just like public transit, there, there's a, there's not a lot of price elasticity. You run people out of the market by raising the price. How else might you raise revenue? Um, you have 40% market share now. If you increase that by 50%, um, that would make a profound difference on your budget. Presumably, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think you offer a suite of services that is unmatched by any of the private haulers. I don't know that they contract additionally for bulk items, but um, I do hear on social media the grousing when they annually raise their rates mm -hmm. and there's some perceived lack of good service. I'm not casting, I'm just reporting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, All right, well, together good. And come up with something. Well, I think this has been very informative tonight. I don't want to hang on too much longer here, but thank you, Randall, for all the uh, information here. And I think this one is one that we got to do some more thinking about and figure out what, what makes the most sense. I mean, I think it's a service that many people in town have come to appreciate over time, and it would be a, a big big change, I think, for a lot of people to not have this service. So Can we I just have to figure out problem? how to work it. Yeah. What if we had to put an ad hoc committee together to focus on this topic over the next year to try to come up with a way to make the transfer station um, mm -hmm. I don't want to say sustainable, what's the right word? Well, Economically that's, that's viable. Right. That's a great word. Well, I think it's it sustainability, right <laughs> like uh, saving the planet kind well, of thing. You're saving the transfer station, Dan. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> so maybe it's that's a thought. It's a thought. Just it's a thought. Throw that yeah, out. it's a thought. We'll take it out. Okay, so with that, um, I think we've gotten through at least the three big departments tonight. We don't know anything yet about the school, and we may not know for a bit on that. Uh, I guess the question would be for finance committee folks. Um, we didn't talk about revenues tonight. Ooh. Do we have some estimated revenues? Not, got we got a draft of that, do we not? 
Bradley does? Yeah, okay. So maybe we could take that up at, a, at the next meeting rather than doing that tonight. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, is there, are there other departments that finance would like to have you know, come before us and, you know, what would you, these are the three biggies. Police, we sent around the uh, PowerPoint from Chief Illingsworth uh, the other night that he did, and then these two tonight. So uh, knowing that the school will come eventually, um, the other ones that would probably be would be the town-wide budget as well as um, probably the library and COA would be the next two kind of combined ones that we would do maybe. So maybe another meeting with those two and yeah. any... Smaller ones, I yeah, some of the other ones I don't know that you've I don't know if you've done like town clerk and treasurer separately or is that they just would come at a, I mean they've done they've presented before but I don't know that it's really necessary. Right. I, I would suggest yeah. instead of doing departments that perhaps as soon as we get the Collins report it might be good to have a joint session right. and okay. go over the Collins report and decide as a group how we're going to implement that. The wages, and then the we can pitch scale. it down to PPB. Yeah, but that would be good too. Yeah, yeah. And the other probably and the, the other department would be Board of Health probably too. So that might be another one. Um, so yeah. Okay. All right. So how often are you guys meeting normally? Would you have another meeting in a couple of weeks, or what's your your schedule sort of? So we're going to do that tonight. Okay. Okay. Well, you're so, thinking about that. Who? What's the process for um, scrutinizing and validating revenue assumptions? We need. We oh, need to. Leave it? I gotta go. Yeah. We need. We need, we need to get the. We need to get the uh, the it revenue just assumptions me the in. the process, and we can leave it. There is not a process. <laughs> so, um, so Bradley's Bradley's be a got a problem some, if there's not a process. Bradley's got some some draft numbers in, but we don't know what all of those are really going to look like yet. So, we've got some draft numbers that we can work with in another yes, meeting. Yeah. We have to. Okay. So. We okay. can do a plus or minus 10% on some of the projections yeah. and see. Well, I mean, the biggest problem is the, the school is, is an unknown. So we, you know, True. We can, we've got revenue, but we don't know how far, how far our gap is going to be until we see some of those figures. We just know it's going to be there. So good. All right. So. Thank you. You too. Perfect. Okay. So maybe uh, our next meeting will be on the 12th. Hmm? Normally, I think it is yep. our, our regular select board meeting. Uh, am I right? Yeah, it'd be on the twelfth. So, if we wanted to, if you wanted to, we could have. Um, Can we, well, yeah, go ahead. We could all be here, and like you know, it's always right on the twenty-first if we want to set up meetings for the health and library and Twenty-first. They're smaller than highway and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and by then, I mean, I'm hoping that by then we will have the the wage plan back in from Collins as well. So that might be a good. We're supposed to have it in September. Uh, yes, the job descriptions have finally gone back around, so that's back to them now to put them in the categories of the. Uh, the wage, so no, I, I don't know that we, we put it out there in September. I'm not sure when we were expecting it, but yeah. So we should have that back around. So that might be good. So March 21st for your your meeting probably, um, as as an as an idea. We may have some separate meetings in between time just for just looking at other things that we we have for some of the some of the smaller smaller budget requests or something like that. Okay. So with that, if we have nothing else, I think I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. All right. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. And Aye. yeah. And we'll let Finn come if you want to do your adjournment or not yet. Uh, we have a couple things. To okay. Fine. Oh, March okay. 21st is uh, another open yeah. space committee. Hey. Yeah. I can't really hear what you're saying.